All right, guys, seeing if this is working now. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, guys, seeing if this is working now. Yep, now we're working. Let's see what we got going on here. All righty. This is all still new to me, guys. Right, Give me a second. This is working now. Yep, now we're working. All righty. Let me pause Alrighty. this one. All right. All right, guys, I'm back. 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 Okay, I'm back now. All right, I had to set up some backgrounds on the back so I can hide all the machines and stuff, so. So many people tuning in tonight and here and see what's going on. Uh, I'm just here working at the house, so uh, trying to do some of these videos for you guys. Um, let's see what's going on here. Uh, let's see what's going on. I'm not going to make this very long if I don't. Let's see what's going on. Alrighty. All right. Yeah, so you guys ask away. I went thrifting today. Spent $168 on clothes today, so got quite a bit of stuff today. I did a video earlier on um, same thing, but I didn't show up on YouTube, so it was about an hour long. So uh, we'll see if it pops up on there. If it will, I'll uh, upload it to the page. But uh, seeing if you guys have any questions, real quick. Um, I did spend a lot of money today on thrift and stuff. There's a lot of good shirts and stuff. Uh, probably almost 50 shirts, 40 shirts two pairs of shoes and I got a bunch of stuff yesterday also so um did pretty good yesterday and today so uh one person asked me on YouTube about one of my videos they said hey uh how come you do clothing and clothing's too time intensive and I said well uh with Amazon they can you know they can they can kill you at any day I mean any time of the day they want to get done with you um you know that's the thing with Amazon uh say you're doing fifty hundred thousand dollars a month and you get an A to Z claim or something, and they just to say, okay, we're going to close your account or freeze your account, and you don't have any money coming in. Uh, if Amazon's your only business avenue, then then you're out of and you're out of luck. Hey, you're back again. <laughs> yeah, you're out of luck. So I mean, that's that's the thing with Amazon guys is that's why I have different sources of income. Uh, you know, I have I have Amazon, eBay, Shopify, my day trading, and I bought the travel agency because. Even though I do, you know, make you know fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a month on Amazon. I mean, I, my gross sales are about nineteen thousand usually on Amazon. Even though it's on Amazon, well, the way their whims are, they could close you at any day. They could suspend you at any time. And if they, if they, if your whole livelihood, I know a lot of people, their whole livelihood is Amazon. If for any reason they suspend your account or say block what you're, like, gate what you're selling. You're out of luck, guys. I mean, your 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 money's gone. I mean, so you don't want to put all your your eggs in one basket, as they say. Usually, you want to have multiple sources of income. And yes, it causes it causes me more money and more time to do eBay and clothing and stuff like that. But uh, with me, I don't have any bills hardly at all. And if they do, they're already paid a month or two ahead of time. Hey, Adam, I want to make sure this is working, buddy. I uh, put some carpet things up in the back so you can see the machines and stuff. I don't have one long one, so I had to do a. Uh, the, my my uh, backdrop for my mannequins they came in one black and one white so I'll I'll get something more done better so uh, yeah something a little bit better but uh, uh does your Amazon that commercial actually get CDs to have a, I can do it either way I don't do the JFJ I sold my JFJ to uh, Alexander on my page he's my admin he's a guy from Russia I sold I sold him my JFJ I don't even have my JFJ anymore. Yeah, I basically just um, on my uh, on my to get the polish look, I just run it with that new buffing pad that comes with Echo Pros, and it comes right out. So the Echo Pros get it right out, and it looks immaculate and clean and everything. So, hey Jason, you got to get Adam. You got to get the the black pads, buddy. Here, let me show them to you. Let me get them. They're behind my curtain here. Hold on. Sorry, I had to get them behind my curtain here real quick. All right, Adam, just for you, buddy. Uh, 
This is what the, the regular pad looks like on the Echo Pro, okay? This is a new buffing pad. You need these, okay? These are kind of dirty. i got to wash them up. But you can see the difference. One's up, sorry. One's the white and one's the brown, the black. This will make it look like glass, okay, buddy? This is the, the, the working pad. I've got like 65 of these, 70 of these now. Uh, these uh, run like $10 a pair or $10 for like four of them, okay? No, $10 a pair. They last pretty much forever. You just wash them off with the water when the machine tells you to every 40 uses and then put them in the clothes dryer for about 10 minutes and then start using them again, okay? Dad will take care of the swirls, okay? Adam, you will take care of the swirls. Um, I did another video earlier just a little while ago and uh, I didn't have any of you guys on the page on the group thing and uh, I bought a ton of clothes, guys. Um, and people are, you know, like I said, knocking about clothes even though it's a hard work. It's not hard work, guys. I mean, you take these, you know, you take these items that I've showed showed on the other video, you know, these polos and stuff like this. You just either wash them or just uh, press them real quick and put them on a mannequin. Uh, if you're lazy, you can just here. If you're lazy, you can just. If you're lazy, <clears throat> ah, crap. I mean, if you're lazy, you can just basically just put it on a hanger and try to sell it that way too. But I personally wouldn't do it like that. I would basically just you know put it on a mannequin and do it that way. Okay. Uh, a lot of the dress shirts I got today that I did the other video on, uh, there's a bunch of them, you know, 40 or 50 of them, and they uh, they all need to be pressed, but they're all good shirts. I mean, they're all going to make me, uh, most of them are 4 to $5 a piece. Uh, most of them are going to make me 25 to 50 They're almost on every one of them, probably a couple, couple, couple of them more than that. And then that doesn't include the probably uh, 40, 50 sports coats I have, 50 ties, um, jeans. And probably another 70 shirts. Let me go let my dog out. Give me one second, guys. Sorry, I had to let my puppy out real quick. Alrighty, he was kidnapped. <laughs> I had to put him in a kennel. He uh, sometimes he uh, gets a little crazy and doesn't know what's going on. So, but uh, you know, like a lot of these polos and stuff I got today, guys. I mean, um, sorry guys, let me move everything out of the way. You know, some of these polos and stuff like this, you know, that are really nice. Um, really nice like this. I mean, they're they're really all you got to do is basically just press them and put them on a mannequin. Uh, no, that's all you got to do. Uh, yeah, my puppy, he just hangs out. He's kind of nervous all the time. So, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I do it guys. I mean, it's, it's real simple. I mean, um, I mean, I still do, like I said, I still do 200, 250 CDs of video games every day. Usually I do my FBA from eight to, uh, eight to two. And then I'll do eBay from two to eight. I eat a couple times in between there. Uh, I still get my quota into FBA, which is, uh, like a thousand video games a week or whatever CDs or DVDs. And what helps out a lot is because I do the fact that I'm ungated in pretty much everything, uh, except for Nike. So, um, and like I said in the other video I did on the live stream a little while ago, um, I don't have any problem listening to anything. Nothing's gone to stranded or anything. So I do notice that I have a lot less competition with the, all the media stuff that now that um, I hardly have any FBA offers at all. Usually it's all merchant. I'm competing against hardly any, uh, any FBA offers at all. So. Uh, it is what it is, guys. It's, it's you know, um, if you're ungated, it's a good quality to have because you, you're gonna have a lot of a uh, lot less competition if you're ungated and all those things already. So, um, but yeah, like clothes today. I'm, sorry, guys. Let me get everything out of the way here. My dogs keep knocking everything over. Um, like with shirts, I mean, basically uh, shirts. Like I did the other video earlier today. I did it on a uh, screenshot on, on my iMac and. Uh, I showed you guys how to basically go to sold listings. You know, basically, if you want to find the best shirts, the best jeans, the best shoes, uh, uh, where do you buy all the CDs at? I get them locally. I mean, uh, there's a couple stores around here that sometimes they have bulk off days, uh, like holiday specials, where you buy like one bag, get one bag free. So it's you're basically getting 100 CDs for $15, which is 15 cents. Uh, I've literally got about 14, 15,000 CDs in the garage, so I haven't bought any, any CDs in a long time, so, um, yeah, I haven't bought any CDs and DVDs in a while. I mean, I get some, like, like today I got like 30 or so or 20, and then 
that a state sale yesterday. I've got like 20 or 5 or 30, but I'm not buying hundreds or thousands. Usually buy, I usually buy thousands at a time, like Gaylords at a time, you know. Gaylord will really hold probably 1200 and I usually get those for like $400. Um, but I haven't had any issue uh, buying any. I just don't, I haven't bought any more because I got so much I got so much here already. So, And I want to travel more. That's why I bought the travel agency. So basically I canceled all my Merchant Fulfilled stuff. I only had like 900 and something items left. And, and my Merchant things, they were only selling like maybe a couple a week, you know, maybe five or ten a week. Uh, FBA, I was selling 400 a week, you know, so it's just a... Uh, it was kind of a waste for me to spend, you know, 30 minutes a day doing orders and I'm making $15 or something. So uh, that's why I kind of stopped doing MF. Plus, I want to travel more. So uh, having problems with Buffy and PS4. Uh, uh, what kind of machine are you using, Jose? Uh, I use two Echo Pro 2s and I have an Echo Master. Uh, I don't have any problem buffing anything. Um, depends on what kind of machine you have, buddy. Um, the Echo Pro 2s will get out a lot of stuff. Same thing with the JFJ Easy Pro. That's what I used to have. Uh, they both have their limits. They're not going to get everything out. That's why the Echo Master I got is, you know, sixteen, eighteen thousand dollars. But it's it'll fix anything. Um, a lot of times with my video games and stuff like that, I'll basically I have every video game system except for a PS4. Um, you know, I'm going to have them all set up pretty soon on a rack, and I'm going to show you that rack. And then I uh, I have one TV. It's going to go to to an AV switch where it's going to have everything hooked up. And um, it'll basically, I'll be able to, like, really, I have, like, a whole stack of, like, really hard hammered ones that I'm about to run through the master and then basically test them to make sure they, they even boot up, you know. So, uh, Echo Pro 2, yeah, Echo Pro 2 has its limits, buddy. Um, you know, this is, like I said, this is the pad it uses. It's just a basic compound fill pad. This thing, all it does is basically fill up the scratches, okay? It's not going to remove a lot of bad stuff. Like, um, let me show you here real quick. Uh, let's see what I got here. This is Madden. This is Madden Node Five. I got to run through the master, but you can see, you can see how bad this one is. Really quick, let me show it to you. You know, it's got them. See how it's got them all over. I mean, this one's a pretty bad disc. You can't really see. I'm trying to show you, but the Echo Pro won't get all. You can see all that. The Mega Pro won't get all those out. They're they're pretty bad. I can just look at them. There's thousands of little scratches on that one. Um. The Echo Pro and the JFJ Z Pro have their limits. Um, they're not going to be able to get all that out. So uh, a lot of times people like, you know, I was buying bulk on eBay. You know, I did, I got okay. I mean, I bought like a thousand video games, but maybe 350 of them are sitting in the closet because they don't have artwork. And then I had about 150 of them need need the master to run them through to see, see if they even, even boot up. So a lot of times at eBay, I, I used to buy them. I don't buy them anymore. But I mean, I, last two weeks I bought a bunch of them. And then they, most of them, like I said, most of them don't have artwork. And, uh, most of them are, are really hammered bad and uh, like I ordered 400 one time and they, there was like 31 cases of didn't have any CD so I had to send them a little dirty letter and say hey man you, you guys owe me another 30 31 cent, uh, video, video game so they, they supposedly sent it I haven't checked my mail yet to see if I've got them in yet but uh, yeah so uh, that's the only thing with video games I mean though even though they do have good price points and everything if you're if you're engaged for them um, but you're gonna have to get a bigger machine probably or you know, send them to me and I'll repair them for you or something, or, or send them to some other company that repairs them for you. So, uh, the Vermeil, uh, I've heard of it. Uh, I know it's not as good as the Master. Uh, I heard it's okay. I mean, it's, uh, I personally have never used it though, so I really wouldn't know. Um, the only things I've ever used are the JFJ Z Pros and then the Echo Pro 2s and the Echo Master. The Echo Master is a big machine. It's expensive, but I, I pretty much knew that if I got into media that I wanted to. Be able to have the capabilities of fixing things that were just completely torn up. You know, I didn't want to start repairing people's CDs and then they get half of them and I say, hey, I can't do have them because I don't have the machine for them. So uh, I went ahead and got this machine anyway. So it does help out quite a bit on everything. So um, I'll, probably, I'll, probably, I'll probably do a Shopify store where I do like outsourcing on a, that kind of thing where I'll just do, you know, charge like $2 to fix them for you or something like that or. You know, basically, I know some guys out there they charge two, three, four, or five dollars a piece to repair them. So, I may do that. Um, depends. You know, if, if you guys need it more, I'll do. I'll set up a. I'll set up a, a, a quick Shopify store and, and boost that on Facebook, and then do that on the side also. So, uh, but yeah, I, I just you know, guys, it's just stay busy. That's all it is. I mean, um, yeah, especially with clothing, people always talk about my you know uh, my clothing and stuff like that, and. Um, you know, even though I'm buying these shirts for three dollars or four dollars a piece, I mean they're gonna all gonna go for thirty to fifty, twenty-five to 
25 to 40 at least, you know, so. Uh, how much would you charge each Xbox One game? Uh, probably like $1.50, $2. Uh, Xbox, uh, yeah, email, uh, musclemonkeymedia uh, at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got two labs. I got the one lab that causes all the problems, and I have to get my steamer out. That's my puppy. He's uh, Jake. Uh, and then my, my other older one is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Bucky. My other one is Jake, the older one. Come here, Bucky. Come on. Come here, Bucky. Let me show you Bucky real quick. Come on. Come on. He used to be a puppy. Now he's this big. So he's gotten a lot bigger. You can see he's a... Uh, when I did my first videos, he was like a really tiny, teeny, tiny dog. And now he's a... Uh, now he's, you know, a 60-pound lab, so he's uh, he's getting up there pretty good, so uh, they're both my little hunting dogs, even though they live in an apartment, so uh, they love to play, though. My, other, my Jake, he's a seven and a half. He got, got lonely, though. He's been by himself the last seven years, so uh, these guys play a lot, but Bucky, of course, he's a puppy, and I've got him trained to kennel and all that, but he's still, you know, he, pee, he pees a little, little bit here and there if he gets excited or something, so. I bought like a five hundred dollar steamer, so you know, come, you know, is what it is when you have dogs. So yeah, yeah, he's got this squeaker dog. Let me see. I bought him a new camo, a camo uh, porcupine or something. So whatever it is, and they don't last like a day or two. He tears up, tears them up with him and eats a squeaker thing, so it doesn't last long. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if you guys have any questions? Let me know. Yeah, I'm gonna do a heavy, eBay pretty heavy, like I said, my mannequin. This is my backdrops normally. There's a black one here. And I'll put the mannequin in front, or I'll do the white one over here. They go five feet across, and then uh, I'll put the mannequin in front and shoot the pictures with the sports coats or whatever. But <clears throat> like I said, most of these shirts I did on the other video today. Um, let me show them to you real quick. So I'll just show you some of them. Most of these shirts, like this is an Eddie Bauer, you know, shirt, uh, Eddie Bauer. Most of these shirts just need to be pressed and hung up, you know. But when you're getting the shirts, guys, it's just like CDs, just like DVDs, video games. It's all about presentation on eBay. Um, especially with shirts, because I don't sell media on eBay because there's so many guys selling media on eBay. So with shirts, it's all about presentation. You spend your, you know, sixty, eighty dollars on a mannequin. You get your mannequin, and um, basically put the put the shirt on there, press it. I have an iron and a press and everything. It takes like three minutes to press your shirt. Put it on there, take a bunch of pictures, and list it. I mean, um, you know, it's it's good residual income. I mean, until you get enough listings where you get two, three, four, five hundred listings up, a thousand listings up. You'll start making pretty good money if you're buying the right brand. When the clothing, the only, only thing I sell on eBay is clothing and electronics. You know, I have like a lot of, I have like all the, you know, 20 or 30 Wii systems. I've got GameCubes. I've got all the v PS2s, PS1s. I've got Genesis, uh, you know, Wii. i got all these GameCubes. I bought like 100 of them about a month ago. And uh, I'll pair those up with like 20 games and do them in a bundle on eBay. Uh, I, I bought another table at an auction yesterday in a state sale. There was a crafting table. It folds out. It's like a five feet by four foot, so it'll let me have a lot of depth to shoot the videos or pictures for guitars because I have a lot of, about, I have like 20, 25 of those Wii guitars, PS2, PS3 guitars, Xbox 360 guitars, and I'll pair them up with a lot of different games. I'll just buy a bunch of, you know, I'll have a bunch of games, and I'll just pair up like, you know, like this one here is Guitar Hero, brand new Guitar Hero. Aerosmith, I'll just pair that up with a guitar and then uh, maybe put two guitars together, sell it in a bundle on eBay. It's, you're going to get a lot more in a bundle than you would with a um, with just a guitar sitting there with a strap and nothing else. So you'll get a lot more money for it. So, um, But with clothing, I did a video today, like I said, with clothing. It's, um, you get you make really good money on them. I mean, um, I, I did, a, you know, like I said, if you're going to do, if you want to do ties, men's dress shoes, you know, if you want to do men's dress shoes, Alan Edmonds, so one of the best ones out there, Gucci, Prada. Um, you know, anything like that, you're going to make a lot of good money, uh, bundling, you know, that stuff. I mean, I'm, those clothes together because I see guys selling polo shirts, four or five together at a time, you know, I'm drinking my water here. Um, you can bundle it. Um, but like, like I said, with my video games, I don't sell any, all my video games, DVDs and CDs go to Amazon. Um, I make better money on that. I have about 30 or 40 stereo receivers, you know, like. Sony players, disc players, VHS players, the combos, the the ones that hold 400 CDs at a time. I, I need to plug them in. Well, you, I need to plug them in, and I need to uh, order remotes on eBay for them. But 
when you when I was getting those for two dollars a piece, a dollar a piece. Ah, Kaylee's in the house. <laughs> Kaylee, twenty twenty. <laughs> ah, you're you're going sneaky on me, huh, Kaylee? Yeah, but um, yeah. So it's just uh, yeah. With those with those uh, things like that, you know, when like you said, when you're getting them for a dollar, two dollars, don't pass that up. I mean, you know, if you're getting them for a dollar, two dollars, you know, you can make. You know, if you're getting a Sony 400 CD cassette player, you know, that'll hold 400 CDs, and you're getting it for two dollars. The remote's going to cost you five bucks, probably ten bucks. You know, you can make. You know, you can know you can sell that thing for fifty to two hundred on eBay. I mean, you know, just ballparking it. I mean, come on. That's why if you, when you're buying it for a dollar or two dollars or whatever, you can't beat that. I mean, you know. So same thing with clothes. Clothes is just another format for me besides um, CDs, DVDs, and video games. After a while, like I said, when you're in this room, 10 hours a day, 15 hours a day, working on CDs and video games, it gets monotonous. That's why I break it up and do eBay. My day trading is automatically done on a computer program, so it's pretty much plug and play kind of thing. Um, and Shopify, I'll get to that eventually. I'm kind of that's that's my third thing, and then my travel agency I just bought. Uh, that'll let me negate me to travel quite a bit. Um, but yeah, yeah. You know, basically, with eBay, on the, well, the way I want to do eBay is I'm going to basically hire sourcers. I'm, I'm making a binder up. I'll probably do an e a Udemy course on Udemy or something for everybody, you know, nation worldwide, you know, about how to sell clothes, how to how to how to list them, how to take pictures of them, how to press them, what to buy, how to outsource, how to buy, how to hire shoppers. <clears throat> you know, basically, what I'm going to do is hire professional shoppers, and their job is going to be basically to shop all day. Uh, you know, whether I do part-time or full-time, you know, basically I'll say, hey, here's a $200 gift card. You know, this is what I want you to go buy. Uh, these are the brands of shirts you need to look for. And I'll basically say, I'll give them a binder. They'll have like a like a, like a a binder, and they'll have pictures in there of what shirt. And I, on my phone, I've taken about 200 pictures of the labels that I've been at thrift stores. I've taken about 200 pictures of labels, okay? And... Um, so I'll basically say, okay, this is the label you need to look for. I want you to buy this shirt. You know, and I really don't care about $4 and under. And I'm going to basically pay them. I'm not, I haven't figured out the commission structure yet, but I'm going to pay them to go to the, go to the stores. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to either hire it on Craigslist or whatever, but I'm going to do basically say, okay, I need you to shop. Your job is to shop all day or however you part-time or five hours a day, four hours a day, whatever you want to do. I want you to go buy these clothes. I'm going to give you an e-gift card. It's going to go to your email. You have an e-gift card on there, and you basically, uh, most of the stores will probably have to have a hard gift card because most of my stores and the thrift stores in my area, they got to have a physical debit card, you know. Most of them have just a little merchant thing, so, you know, they slide your card. So most of these people won't be able to do it on, the, on an e-gift card, so you have to, I may have to basically just go to Walmart, you know, every couple of days and buy gift cards for my employees. And basically, like I said, I'm going to say, okay, I need you to go go to the thrift stores. I need you to look for shoes that are Allen. And I'll give them up like a list of 20 brands of shoes that, that, that I know make money. These shirts, I'll, I'll say, okay, I need you to go, you know, I need you to go and buy every every Ralph Lauren polo shirt. I need you to, anything that says Brooks Brothers, Nine Iron, Slim Fit, I want you to pick up, you know, and I'll have a binder for them, okay? Same, you know, they'll, have, they'll take a binder with them. And they'll, you know, they call me, they need anything, but. That's the way to get it, get yourself from having to do it every day. I don't mind doing it, but yet I'm only one guy. I can only hit maybe, you know, honestly, two or three thrift stores a day because I have so much else going on, you know. And uh, usually when I go to a thrift store, I start with the shirts. <clears throat> There's usually probably three to 400 shirts every time I go. So you got to go through every one of them as fast as you can. You know, so all you're doing is looking for labels. You're looking for the name. That's all you're looking for. And then I go through shirts, and then I go to ties, and then I go to sports coats, and then I piddle around at the electronics a little bit. But, but if I have four or five people doing that for me and I say, okay, every shirt you bring me, I'm going to give you $2, $3. Even though I'm making, you know, probably 20 bucks on a shirt, <clears throat> after fees and everything, I'm still making 15 or 20 If I may, if I can pay them to bring me $2 a shirt or $3 a shirt, and say they bring me 35 shirts in two hours, they made $65 in two hours, you know, and it's, it just saves me the time for me having to physically go out to the thrift stores and do it. It's outsourcing. That's just a simple thing. You just have to figure out your fee structure and how you want to pay your employees. And then, how, you know, whether you're, you're basically, like I said, you're going to give them the, the gift card. Most of these people probably won't want to spend their own money to buy the shirts. So you give them a gift card to buy the shirt, and then you pay them on top of that. You pay them $2 and a shirt for their time, their driving, all the, 
know, they got to go to the store, they got to do all the sorting, they got to pay for it and bring it back and to you. To me, it's worth two dollars a shirt. You know, I wouldn't go to like four or five dollars a shirt. I'd go like two bucks a shirt or some other commission structure. That's all. And basically, once you hire three or four or five of those listers, you know, the shoppers, they'll be bringing you forty or fifty items a day, and you ain't got to do nothing except you know refill your gift cards and you know pay them whatever you do every week or something. So, um, sorry guys. Uh, how have your local auction items been going? Yeah, I haven't uh, auctions. Yeah, you know, good. I haven't done. I haven't gone to my Salvation Army auction in about three weeks. There's just nothing I need there. Uh, like I said, if I had more labor, I could basically go there and buy 30 or 40 Wii consoles a week, and I could buy uh, <laughs> thousands of books. Uh, I just I just don't have the labor, and I just don't know if I want to go. I just don't know if I want to do books anymore. I mean, I still got like 3,000 books here I haven't got to yet. I just don't know if I want to do books anymore due to the fact that there's no money left in books at Amazon. I mean, yeah, some of the price points have gone up, but still, um, you know, with all the machines I have and everything, it's, for me, it's more I'm probably going to be more towards just staying with DVDs, video games, and, uh, you know, like I said, I'm ungated in every shoe brand except for Nike. I know Kaylee, she's ungated in Nike, and she doesn't really care about Nike either, so um, it's kind of funny when you see guys buying Nike shoes, and they're buying 100 pairs of shoes, and they're literally spending probably three to $4,000 buying tennis shoes. Uh, you know, that's just... For me, that's the price point's kind of too high for me to do that. So, I don't want to tie up three thousand dollars in you know forty pairs of shoes and you know hope I get them. You know, you get return rates of what twenty, thirty percent on your return rates or whatever that is. And you know, but, but I'm like I said, I'm gonna get into shoes and I'll buy occasionally. I'll buy some new pairs if I'm at Ross or Marshalls or TJ's. I'll pick up a pair or two, but sometimes maybe three or four pair. But that's about as much as I'm gonna get is probably four, three or four pair. I'm not gonna you know want to spend one hundred and twenty-five dollars on four pairs of shoes. You know, even over you're getting these shoes for thirty dollars or forty dollars, and they're going for 100 hundred, hundred and twenty on Amazon. You know, I just, I just don't have a lot. I just haven't, don't have a lot of experience in shoes, so I kind of haven't ventured that far over into shoes. So yeah, but the auctions, yeah, I can go to auctions. I'll do my online auctions. I haven't done any in a couple of days. I got, they didn't have any in the last couple of days for some reason. They have a bunch this week though, so I'll take a look and see if there's anything I need. But uh, I may not do any more online auctions for another a couple of days. So. Uh, uh, Jose, Fallon, Son of Vito, again, so does... What refurbished grade and good? I'll buy anything that works, buddy. Uh, I have, like, probably... At one auction I got a like, couple weeks back, I got, like, 25 Xbox 360s, 10 or 15 Wii's. And what I do is I basically pair them together. And if the if the Xbox console is really bad, the, the outer shell is bad, I'll buy some blank consoles on eBay. Or if it's really bad, I'll buy a skin. Uh, I'll get like some cool, they're, they're like, like a marijuana pot skin, or they have like Joker skins and Batman skins, and I'll just skin the outside of it. Because <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, the cases are all scratched up and stuff. Instead of buying a new case, I'll just buy a $7 skin on eBay, and I'll skin the I'll skin the whole shell, and I'll skin the remotes, and then I'll throw together three or four games and pair it all together. And uh, you, those skins, even though they cost you 7 or $8, they'll... I've noticed that they, they up my price on my, my price points when I'm selling a bundle like that, though. So compared to just a basic Blaine Jane White 360, you throw a skin on that and then throw in like 10 or 15 games, I can get games down here for like a dollar, $1, dollar fifty a piece on a game. So throw in 10 or 15 games and you'll get that bundle up to 100, 150 bucks easy. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll buy any of them, Jose. Yeah. Uh, Steve, hey, buddy. Someone else I watch is looking at paying two dollars an item. Yeah, about two dollars. I think is the, the price point. I mean, like I said, if, if I can, if like I said, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do a course on it. It's going to be probably one of the best ones out there for clothing. And uh, you know, basically, like I said, I, I've taken pictures on my phone of every single logo. So like, this is a Brook Brothers Slim Fit Non Iron. Slim Fit Non Iron. I did in the other video a little while ago. This shirt will go minimum. All the shirts I have. You, will, you should not sell them for less than $25. If you are, you're wasting your money, okay? Brooks Brothers, Polos, Pendletons, Charvettes will get you $70 to $100. Prada, Gucci will get you uh, Stefano Ricci, $150 to $500 for a shirt for Stefano Ricci. Um, but basically, all these shirts, you know, if you give somebody a list and they know exactly what to look for, you say, okay, Mary Beth, okay, hey, Mary Beth calls me and says, hey, I need, I need some money. So um, I give her a gift card and I say, okay, go to Thrift City, Thrift Mart, Thrift Texas, whatever. 
I need you to find me. The, you have a list here of 25 different shirt brands. I need you to go. That's all I want you to buy is that, okay? And she'll go and she'll look through every shirt and it'll, you know, and I'll pay her basically if she finds, you know, if she comes back to me with 25 polos and Brooks Brothers, I'll give her 50 bucks. If it took her an hour, it took her three hours. I'll give her $2 a shirt. Plus, you know, she didn't have to, like, the card I gave her was free. So basically, I'm paying her $2 a shirt to go out to the store to spend her two hours there bring the crap back to me and I pay her. She knocks on the door, I give her the shirt, she gives her money. I mean, it's pretty simple, guys. I mean, you know, uh, you know, but you don't want to go out there and, you know, be spending $500 a day on five sorcerers and you give them each 50 bucks and then you got, you know, 155 shirts in three days. So you don't want to do that high up. You want to kind of break yourself into it, okay? Uh, that's definitely where I'm going to go with the clothing. Uh, like I said, I can still list 491 items this month. Uh, or twenty six thousand, twenty four thousand eight hundred and something dollars. So, uh, as I get more, sell a lot more of these, and basically the price points where I'm going to have them, they're going to be competitive. They're just going to be basically what was sold in the last thirty days. So, say you have like a shirt like this, okay? Uh, say you have like a uh, this Brooks Brothers Nine Iron Slim Fit. You can just go into sold listings in the last thirty days if you want to, and just pull up the pricing. It'll be anywhere from twenty to thirty five or thirty eight, okay? And what you want to do is just basically go $32.95 or best offer. Somebody will come back and say, hey, I like that shirt. I'll give you uh, $27.50 for it, okay? Done, okay? I'm not going to do any free shipping. They're going to have to pay their own shipping probably, though. Uh, the shipping will probably be, you know, basically it's this shirt's only going to be uh, five, six, seven ounces maybe. So about three dollars in shipping. So uh, I'll just charge a flat rate or whatever else people charge, like $6.95 or whatever for flat rate priority. They'll get it in two days. So, uh that's real simple, guys. You just you, once you learn the system, you know, just like they, I told you guys in EMIT, the EMIT mastery, you want to build a system that's kind of idiot proof, okay? So, so say you have one person and that, their job is you give them, you give them the sheet for shirts. You tell them I want you to find shoes, okay? When you're out, you, when you're out looking for shoes, I want you to find real nice shoes. If it says made in Italy, buy it, okay? Made in Italy, made in Sweden. Uh, now don't, don't don't buy it if it's like a you know. Uh, you know, a, a Dockers or some some place in Blaine Jane. But if you get a lot of these real nice black leather shoes like this, made in Italy, I paid four dollars for these shoes, guys. I'll sell this shoe for probably anywhere between forty and seventy. Um, when it says made in Italy, made in Switzerland, if it said made in China, of course it's crap. But I mean, if it's a, if it's anything made in Italy and it's got an Italian name to it, go ahead and pick it up. You're probably going to get most of these for three to five dollars. Sometimes six or ten. I did go to one thrift store last week and they had a pair of Pradas, um, Prada high heeled boots, and the lady would not come off eighty bucks. Uh, she said seventy nine ninety five, and I was like, "You're no, you're a thrift store. Come on, in Little Mexico, you want to sell Pradas for eighty dollars? Come on." And if she would have gone down to like forty, I would have bought them. I know I can probably make about one hundred fifty two hundred on those Pradas. Pradas are a big name. Prada, Gucci, Polo. Uh, a lot of those shirts and I mean a lot of those shoes, you're getting good money for, even if you're paying five to six dollars. And I notice a lot of people on YouTube, they piss and moan about having to clean them. Come on, guys. It, it just takes a couple minutes to clean their shoe. I mean, uh, people are just, <laughs> a lot of people on the Internet, man, they just want everything for nothing. They don't want to do any work for anything, man. Come on. It, cleaning shoes, you just walk, soap and water, get a, a brush and brush some shoe polish on there, buff it off real quick, and you're done. I mean, if you want to be even lazier, just take all your stuff to a shoe guy and have him buff them. They'll, they'll buff the shoe for like 3 or 4 or $5 for you if you're that lazy. Just They'll buff the shoe for like five bucks. If you don't want to do any work at all, just outsource that too. I mean, you can. There's a couple pairs of shoes that I have that are need to be resold, and I'll basically have to take them over there, and they'll probably charge me five or ten or fifteen bucks to resole it. But when you're buying that shoe for five dollars, and that Allen Edmund shoe goes for hundred to hundred and fifty dollars a piece, I'll pay ten bucks to make hundred and fifty. So, um, and I don't do any export, Jose. Uh, yeah, uh, skinning. Yeah, skinning the game consoles. You can skin anything. You can skin the Wii's, you can skin the GameCubes, definitely the 360's and the Xboxes. All the Xboxes I have, I have a bunch of them that have stickers all over them and all that crap. So basically you can either, those I'll have to buy a new skin, a new console for. The, the outer shell, you can get the outer shell on eBay usually for, uh, you know, about 10 bucks, 10 or 12 dollars for the outer shell. Uh, and then I'm like, look brand new, otherwise you can throw a skin on there. The skins really pop, I mean they really, you don't see a lot of people that sell skinned consoles. And you're only out seven or eight bucks. I mean, really, and I can make that back on a video game. So it's, you know, it's a good idea to skin the skin the consoles if you have the time. And you just go on any any eBay and just type in Xbox 360 skins. 
SKINS, and you'll see them. Don't get the ones that are like thirty, forty dollars. Get the ones from China. They're, you know, they got them on eBay for like seven ninety five or something like that. So, and oh, you gonna go back <laughs> in the sunny by the beach? You gonna go? I got, I got two hundred something videos. It's gonna take you a while. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, shoes, uh, shoes. Basically, I, I do tennis shoes also. Like I said, I bought these today too. Real nice brook shoes. They just need to be cleaned up. I mean, the, basically, what you, when you get looking at tennis shoes, look at the bottom and then do this flex test, okay? Make sure there's no breaking right here in the crease. Make sure it's not cracking. This one's not. It's fine, okay? But basically, you you want to do is put a plastic insert inside of here when you're washing it and then throw it in the wash, and it'll kind of fluff this part out a little bit. And basically, you can get you know a cleaner. I have this new uh, Magic Eraser cleaner for the white stuff, and then basically, the rest of it will wash out in the washing machine, okay? Real simple, guys. And then just tie your shoestrings real nice. Put it on. Put it like. Put it in your boom light boom thing. And you know, I paid. Uh, these were sixteen ninety one. I got them for eight dollars. I'll make forty, fifty, sixty. They're Brooks running shoes. They look practically. I mean, I mean, look at them. They look practically brand new. I mean, I would say I could go. I would say very good or like new. I mean, there's nothing wrong with these shoes. You see the insoles hardly. There's no stains in the insoles. I mean, the shoe looks. Practically, I mean, no. I mean, I paid eight dollars for that shoe. So, um, yeah, in like in Israel, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I was in the Navy back in '89, so it was, uh, it's a different time. I was back in the SEAL teams back in the day, and it was '89 uh, to '95 was um, a different time. It was back in the '80s, you know, and it's a different time and place, and. Um, and things have changed definitely in the, in the future, and uh, good and bad. I mean, I'm not going to say you know all bad, but um, most of the people nowadays, you know, they just they don't want to work really. Honestly, I mean, you see all these e entrepreneurs on YouTube, and they're talking, oh, I'm living the lifestyle, and I'm you know you have these little 18 year old girls saying they're traveling the world and having an e commerce lifestyle. No, they're not. I mean, there's no. <laughs> come on, I mean, 19 years old, and yeah. It may be rare. I mean, they may occasionally do that, but, um, you know, if you don't, you know, you got to put your time in. You got to put your dues in. I mean, you know, when I started selling CDs a year and a half ago on Amazon, I, I started with 30 bucks. You know, now my, my gross sales are sixteen to $20,000 a month. I mean, every month. And that's just with me with 5,000 items at FBA. I would, you know, my limit at FBA is 55,000 items. If I got to 55,000 items at Amazon, it's, I'd have to hire people to do that. But, I mean, I would be making... You know, I'm not going to be actually probably forty five, fifty thousand a month just on video games. If I had fifty five thousand, if I had my my FBA limit of fifty thousand items, you know, you, you wouldn't see me. You'd see me in my house in Belize pretty much, and I'll be I'll just been doing Skype videos from my Belize home. So yeah. No, not on YouTube. I thought I did. I did, well actually I did before. I was on social media about a year and a half ago, and. Uh, and uh, I had some haters, and I had like 150 videos, and I deleted them all. Right now on YouTube, I think I've only got 50, but then on my Facebook page, I've got like 150. Or let me go. I can't really tell. I can't look because I'm doing a video right now. But <coughs> my other one, I've got like 150. Yeah, my dogs are fighting in the back, so uh, they like to play. So, um, but yeah, guys, like I said, I'm, I'm just here to do info for you guys. I don't, I don't sell any courses right now or anything or coaching or none of that stuff. I mean. People ask me to coach, and I said I don't think I'm that good enough to coach you guys yet. But I mean, uh, uh, the video is really going to come in detail. To, you know how I'm going to outsource all this, and you'll basically, I'll show you. I'll hire my first person probably next week or the week after, and I'm going to pay them. Basically, I'm going to try to do like two bucks an item, and uh, they're basically just going to go to the store. Like I said, and the shirts I'm going to show you real quick are here: Brooks Brothers, okay, Wrangler, George Strait shirts. You know, Pout, Rolo, Ralph Lauren, you can't, these are going to go minimum 25 every every single time. You, you should not sell a polo for less than $25. If you are, you're stupid, okay? I'm just going to say, if you're selling a polo for less than $25, you're, you're losing money, okay? Wrangler, this is a Wrangler. This one I got, it's a Texas Stampede Wrangler. This one's probably going to go, it's a rare vintage, you know, this, they, don't, they don't have these anymore, Texas Stampede ones. Um, I'm probably going to list this like $49.95 or best offer, okay? Yeah, my dog's fighting. <laughs> that's, that's my big dog crying. 
Um, Another good one, guys. I would tell whoever buys them, XMI Platinum, okay, right here. XMI Platinum. Uh -huh. This is a good brand right here, okay? This will get you uh, 30 to 50, especially the multicolors, okay? Uh, XMI Platinum, they're, they're known to have a lot of flashy, like pink, yellow, brown, black, just straight colors, okay? When you find a multicolor, it's always going to generate more revenue for you, okay, on a multicolor, okay? Uh, like another brand I would tell them to be would be Peter Millar. This is a Peter Millar right here. This is another high-dollar shirt, okay? Peter Millar, okay, right here. Uh, this is a guy from England, uh, Peter Millar. They, they do make Peter Millar basic shirts. This is the four-colored striped shirt. Uh, it's always going to get more for you, okay? Even though I paid, uh, this was $8 today, I got half off, so I paid $4 for this shirt. Peter Millar is going to get you 25 to 40 every time, okay? Price high, price at 40 price at 30 You know, look at your sold listings, okay? Price at $39.95 or whatever you want to price it at, and then do your best offer, okay? A lot of times you're going to have to take a best offer. Um, but for me, it's going to be kind of like the same thing as with CDs. It's going to be churn and burn. Um, I'm going to list them all very competitively. I'm not going to go out there at $89.95. Now, if I do get a Charvette or a Stefano Ricci, you know, Stefano Ricci, they go, if you look on sold listings today, Stefano Ricci shirts, if you could find any, if you write it down, Stefano, S T E F A N O, S T P H A N O, Ricci, R I C C I. If you find one of those shirts at the thrift store, it's going to be 150 to 500 for that shirt, okay? Same thing with Prada. Same thing with um, Charvette, C-H-A-R-V-E-T. That shirt's going to get you anywhere between 50 and 75 for a Charvette shirt, okay? And all you got to do is go to your thrift stores and go into the dress, just go into the dress shirts, guys. I'm usually the only guy in there buying these, the only guy even looking. Most people are in there. I hate to say I'm usually the only white guy in these stores anyway. I don't mind. I like Mexicans. People, I can speak Spanish and everything to you, so I, I don't mind. I usually had like today. I had my iPod on, and my headphones on. I was listening to Cinderella and Poison today. So, you know. Tommy Hilfiger always will get you about twenty to twenty-five. Just basic Tommy, striped Tommy. You guys, I'm trying to do a video. Bucky, Jay, quit. Uh, Tommy will get you every time twenty about twenty-five dollars. Uh, you'll get a lot of rare stuff too, though. Okay, when you're out looking, look at, look for wild stuff. Look for stuff that's different. I'll show you a couple things here. Okay, now polo here. Okay, I'm gonna show you about polo. This is a green label, and then you have what they call polo. This is a, the Regent style. Okay, anything that has like Regent or vermouth or anything like Yarmouth or anything like that, it's gonna get you a little bit more high, higher price points. Okay, this is a polo. Now today I saw a polo purple label. I bought it. Purple labels. Or like the cream of the crop, and then you have black label. Black label, I've only seen one time. I bought one yesterday. It's a black label. Uh, executive edition or something, Polo. I've never seen a black label, though, before. So, um, but Polo's right here. It's a green. And then you got purple. And then, like, same thing with sports coats. You got green label. You got Shap, Chaps, Ralph Lauren. You got Polo green. And then you got purple. You find a purple sports coat, 100 to, 100 to 200 for purple sports coat. Uh, eBay, I just kind of started about, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, so I don't have a lot on there right now. I had five pairs of shoes. I sold them all in a week, so I made like $300 in like three days. Uh, this week will be big. I had, had kind of had to wait because I didn't have my mannequin in. I didn't want to do any photos yet with my, without my mannequin. I did order a new light box. I shot... <coughs> you got... What did I say? I did shoot a new video uh, on my page, Facebook page, with my new uh, light box. I got one of the best light boxes out there. I, I had a $35 light box I got on Amazon. It was a very basic, flimsy light box to shoot video, shoot pictures in. But this one is uh, one that Amazon Basics makes. It was $139, uh, 150 with tax and all that shipped and all that, Amazon Prime. But uh, awesome. It shoots amazing pictures. Amazing. It's a hard plastic case. If you go to my page, uh, Facebook page, you'll see it on there. It's a awesome, awesome case. You know, that, that's the best light box they have and then the mannequin is that's really all you need is these backdrops right here these curtains go five feet so i'll put the mannequin pretty much in front of the white one and i'll do the i'll have three different lights on the floor and i'll shoot my cameras on a tripod over here and i'll basically set it up and shoot it shoot it like that so um but yeah i mean uh it's just you guys it's kind of hard on these especially and there's a certain way to do ties um shoes like i said are very simple to do i'll do all the shoes in the light box 
I also bought at thrift stores. I buy a lot of calculators, the TI calculators. Um, I've been selling those on Amazon, though. Um, sold a couple guitars on Amazon. So the thing with Amazon, though, is that, like on your guitars, if you want to do them on, I would basically try them, do a split test. Try to try to list a couple bundles on, on eBay and then try to list a guitar and ship them into Amazon. Okay, just ship your guitars. I've got like 30 guitars. Uh, they all work. I've all tested them all. Some of them need to be cleaned up a little bit, but ship them all to Amazon and let them multi fulfill them. So say you get an order off of eBay for a guitar, just go into Amazon and ship. They'll, you know, they'll charge you like $5 to ship it because it's the shipping thing. But I can ship 20 guitars to Amazon in one box for 15 bucks. I imagine trying to ship, you know, 15 of those to customers. It's, it'd be crazy. So, um, there are a couple of different ways I'm going to split test guitars. But, um, yeah, I used to be a, a big titanium seller back on eBay. We used to do a lot of drop shipping. Uh, the drop shipping business has kind of gotten um, nickel and dime. It's basically everybody's cut, ever, you know, cutting in everybody's throat now. And, uh, and basically, you know, you drop shipping. We used to be titanium sellers, so we had like thousands of sales a day. It was all basically about drop shipping Amazon to eBay. Uh, now you can do it. Now you can do Walmart to eBay, Costco to eBay. You know you can do all all those stores now, and um, it may be something I look into eventually if I hire more people. It's just going to be to the point where now with all the CDs and stuff, I have the best machines in the business. So basically, it's just now it's going to be all about labor, building my business empire more, where it's going to be labor, hiring people, and uh, that's the that's the thing I don't like to do is hire people, uh, literally because I don't really trust people very much. I don't trust people a lot, so. Uh, but I'm hiring a uh, social media, social media coach and uh, a success coach. So I'm already uh, belong to the Tony Robbins coaching program. So uh, they help out quite a bit. And um, but I'm not, social media. I know nothing about social media really. I mean, I'm, you know, I don't I don't do Periscope or Twitter. I don't even have an Instagram account. I have Facebook and that's it. So never done MySpace or anything like that. But um, People like a lot of the content I put out, so I mean, I'm just, I'm just, just trying to help you guys out, really. I, like I said, I don't sell courses or anything yet, or any software, or nothing like that. I just, I just kind of tell you what works day in and day out. I mean, you guys can see the videos I do. I mean, it's every day. I don't. It's not me, you know, spouting out information. You know, sitting in an apartment or a warehouse or some place, just shooting, a, you know, information out. You guys actually see me going out buying stuff every single day, so. Another good one, guys, uh, Tom Locke, Tom Harris, London. You see his brand, anything out of London, England, Switzerland, Italian, anything out of Italian, go ahead and snag it, guys. You're going to make your money back. Like I said, most of these shirts, this place I buy, $4, $7.98 $7 4 I paid $4 for this shirt. It would literally, literally take me uh, probably uh, about two and a half minutes to press it on the, on the iron board. Hang it on the mannequin and shoot pictures, and you're done with it. The thing is, I'm going to tell you guys another trick about clothing that I, I noticed. Some, here's a, let me show you real quick. Good brand, guys. This is a very good brand. Pendleton. If you guys ever watch Steve Rankin, Rankin Profits, or the Treasure Known guy, I personally don't know either one of them. I've never talked to either one of them before. Uh, they both talk about Pendleton. Uh, they both. It's, Pendleton's a good shirt, guys. I mean, it's a, it's a name brand shirt out of uh, England, I'm assuming. I can't read it without my glasses. Hold on, let me see where it's. I'm gonna, I don't. I don't even know where Pendleton made of guys. Hardy Farm. It's made out of Oregon. I guess it says Pendleton Company out of Oregon, but it's made in Indonesia. But I mean, you know, Pendleton's a good name, guys. So uh, you always want to stick with stuff like that. But like I say, once you once you know what you're looking for, just pay people to do it for you. Don't don't spend three and a half hours a day at first stores. I mean, Pronto Umo Platinum Edition, another good one. Uh, like a lot of these polos I bought today, uh, this is a uh, Golden Fleece Brooks Brothers polo. You don't see hardly, hardly any of these Brooks Brothers polos anywhere. Uh, the Golden Fleece, if you see this Golden Fleece, it's like a little pig or whatever they call it. Golden Fleece, I paid uh, <laughs> paid two bucks for this shirt, guys. Look at that. $3.98 minus, sorry, guys. Uh, $3.98, I paid $2 for this shirt. It has like a, just a smell to it, like a, like it's been in storage. It doesn't just stink or anything. It's just I have to wash it real quick. Most of these clothes I don't wash. This would be I would say I would call this vintage because it's been worn. You can tell it's kind of worn out a little bit, but a perfectly fine shirt. Brooks Brothers fleece polos, thirty to forty. I mean I wouldn't go like I said. I wouldn't sell any of these shirts, guys, less than twenty five dollars. Uh, I see guys doing like a. Buy it now, is it, you know, or they do a they do an auction at a penny and they sell the shirt for 
five dollars plus five dollars for shipping. So somebody's buying a Brooks Brothers shirt for ten dollars, and all they're going to do is turn around and put it on a mannequin and resell it again. It's just arbitrage. That's all. So. Yeah, Pendleton wool. Yeah, this is a like a, just a polo. Uh, I did buy a bunch. This is one hundred percent cotton. Yeah, polo cotton. Yeah, I did buy a bunch of clothes yesterday. I have another like seven or eight bags of clothes in the garage uh, that are bought a lot of cashmere, a lot of silk. When you see like a lot of big name brands and they're all silk or cashmere, grab it. Uh, silk and cashmere will make money, guys, because uh, you don't see that very often and it's not going to be cheap. If you got a you find a shirt that's 100% silk or 100, a sports coat that's corduroy, like the uh, the old, uh, you see a lot of sports coats that have like the ridges in them, like the real deep, uh, I guess it's corduroy. Corduroy, you know, those guys, people still love those, you know. Um, another Pronto, this is another Pronto Umo Platinum Edition. Um, this one here, guys, you don't see very often. Let me show you this one here. This is a uh, Tommy Hilfiger short sleeve checkered, okay. I don't see hardly any short sleeve Tommies. Uh, this is the first one I've actually seen as a Tommy. It's a short sleeve. Uh, you always have the uh, Tommy logo on the pocket. I don't, very rare to see the short sleeve Tommies. I grabbed this one today because I first time I've ever seen a short sleeve Tommy. So, uh, and then another couple of shirts here. This one was a. Uh, they haven't seen one of these before. A Peter Millar polo. Okay, they had just put these out because I go to this store every Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Uh, Peter Millar. Um, right here. I said I have a lot of his dress shirts. Never seen a polo before. I got the Peter Millar polo, blue and white striped polo. You never see the polo like that, okay? Um, I'm not gonna make this video too long, guys. And this one I got because it's a different shirt, okay? This is called a Bobby Jones golf shirt. Uh, Bobby Jones right here. The reason I got it is because it has a little golfer in the side here. Something different you don't see. It's, you're gonna get more money because it's got this little Golfers love these old antique shirts, you know, Bobby Jones shirt right here. So uh, I could actually even maybe wear this one. Uh, I, don't, I think I don't think it's big enough. No, I can't. It's a large. <laughs> I thought it was a 2X. Yeah, it's a large. But uh, this one here, I mean, I paid um, four. Uh, say it was seven, so I paid three fifty for this shirt. Thirty-five, forty. Start high. Start at like forty-five dollars plus or best offer. Um, what is this one here? This one here, I gotta show you guys. Hold on, let me move my dog. Go. This one here, uh, you guys will like this one, okay? Trump golf. I got a Trump golf shirt right here. Never seen a Trump golf shirt before. <laughs> Trump golf. It's an ugly brown, tan color, but I've never seen a Trump golf shirt before. Some old guy's gonna buy this, I guarantee you. As soon as I list this, somebody's gonna buy it, okay? I paid, uh, it was $5, I paid $2.50 for it, okay? It's a double extra large. It's, it would fit me, but it's ugly. It's ugly. <laughs> it's an ugly shirt. So. Double extra large, tan, Trump, Donald Trump. Somebody's going to buy it just because I love Donald Trump. I used to like the guy. Now I can't. I don't really like him now. So, um, But I'm just going to show you a couple more, and I'm going to get off of here. This is a good one, guys, at branding. Okay, I, I listened to, like I said, Steve Rankin and the Treasure Gnome. They talk about branding. When you, get, when you can get two or three brands on a shirt, it it increases the value of that shirt, okay? So like this one here, first of all, it's a Nike Golf, okay? Nike Golf, which is a good shirt. It is worn, it's kind of worn a little bit. But then you got Byron Nelson. This is a big golf course down, Byron Nelson right here. It's a big tournament down here in Dallas every year, okay? Tiger Woods used to do it, and he hadn't done it in years. This is the, the EDS Byron Nelson Championship, okay? And on top of that, it's got the Nike Swoosh on one side, and it's got Motorola on the other, so it's it's basically branded three times, okay? Nike, Byron Nelson, and Motorola. Somebody's going to buy this because it's that. It's a vintage Byron Nelson EDS championship shirt. I would not price this thing lower than probably 50 and just see what happens, okay? Yes, it is worn, but it's uh, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no holes, no sweat stains, no underarm stains. You know, it's just a little wear on the Nike. Somebody played golf with it, basically, so... Uh, but something like this, when you get vintage shirts like this, guys, you know, you know, I, I don't don't do like twenty five dollars. I mean, you're you're asking for just to lose money. Price it at forty five or fifty, or just try. You can try to key it in on sold listings on eBay and see what happens. But you may uh you may not have any listings for that kind of shirt. So basically, you just look under uh, you know, embroidered golf shirts, you know, or Nike golf shirts, and then see what shows up. 
and you'll see 25 to 50 to 100, you know, kind of just, you have, you're just going to have to wing it and kind of put your price somewhere in that area, okay? Uh, just bid high, don't, don't, you know, you guys, you, you know, you, uh, it's not like me having to feed myself, I got to sell the stuff to feed myself tomorrow. This is just kind of play money for me. Amazon pays all my household bills. This eBay business is all just, this is like a play account for me. It's just like a kind of having fun account. This is all this is to me, okay? And plus I make so much money with my day trading that really both Amazon and eBay are just kind of playing accounts for me, really. Um, another one, I, I'm kind of doing this as a test test, test business to see how fast I can get to $100,000 in sales. I'm kind of doing a journey. I'm probably going to do a Facebook fan page on it, my journey from 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 one dollar to a hundred thousand on eBay, and see how fast I can get to a hundred thousand dollars on eBay. How many, how long it took me, how many listings I had to have to get to a hundred thousand in sales on eBay, and then just next year do the same thing. But how much? How do I get to two hundred fifty thousand, five hundred thousand dollars in eBay? So, but uh, OSU, another good one. Oklahoma State University shirt, college shirt, vintage. It's definitely the. This is a definitely a uh, Izod. It's also an Izod collegiate shirt. So you got the Izod Collegiate down here, okay? Collegiate Izod, very, very expensive kind of thing. Oklahoma State University Polo, $2.50, okay? It's all about sourcing, guys, on your thrift stores, okay? Don't ever, ever pay, don't ever pay retail on uh, thrift stores. Find a coupon. Now, the only thing I get screwed on is at Goodwill. Goodwill, they only have one color a week. Um, like today, it was pink. Tomorrow, it's going to be whatever new color... The new color comes out on Mondays, okay? My other thrift stores, if I buy $50 worth of crap, I get a 50% off coupon that's good for the any day, Wednesday, Thursday, or Sunday. If you go any other day, you're going to pay retail price, okay? So that's why I only shop there Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. I know walking in with my coupon, I can buy anything in that store and get 50% off. That's how you make money, guys. I would, If I would have paid retail for this today, it would have been $385. I got all this today for 165 bucks, but it's all gonna work. It's pretty gonna be worth probably two to three thousand dollars once I get on with it. I'm, I mean, no BS. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, it's uh, when you're buying shirts for 250 and they're worth 30 to 40, and you get you got I got 40 something shirts today. I mean, just add add, add up the numbers. I mean, uh, Etro was another one. Etro was a cool polo I bought today. That's the color Etro. There's is a pe Pegasus on the front of it. Little Pegasus. I bought it because I've never seen an Etro shirt before. Uh, I know they're I know they're popular. Uh, Etro, I've never seen one before, so I bought it. So, um, but uh, let's see. I'll do a couple more for you, and I'm done. Okay. Uh, this is another vintage. Uh, this is called a U.S. Polo Association shirt. Okay. U.S. Polo. Uh, this the polo. This is the polo shirt, like a jockey shirt, because this polo is different than the normal polos. Okay. The normal polo has a guy standing straighter on the horse. This one has the guy live bending over the horse trying to hit the ball thing, okay? If you look at the two polo polo logos, they're completely different, okay? You see this polo logo? It's here. See how he's bending over? And then look at my polo. He's uh, standing straight up. Oh, sorry. See, he's standing straight up. Blech. I'm trying to do this reverse. He's standing straight up, okay? Straight up on this polo. This guy is bending down. See, he's completely sideways on his horse. So this is a U.S. Polo Association shirt, and uh, I got this shirt for two dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Now, if I would have paid retail five bucks, I would. You know, you're not gonna. You know, five dollars. You know, even if you spend five to make twenty-five, it's still okay. But when you're spending two fifty to make twenty-five or two fifty to make forty, your price points are better. So uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Put on to the wall now. No, I've never done the dry cleaning thing in the dryer. No, um, never tried those. I did. I'll show you guys. I bought a. I bought a steam machine at Goodwill. It's a shark. It's on wheels and it has a tank down at the bottom. And it's got a long arm up and it's got a V-shaped thing like this. And you basically put your clothes on a hanger, and you just run this steamer. And it's, you know, just steams right over it. And I bought that for six dollars at Goodwill. And then I bought a yesterday at the thrift store. I bought a. Nobody knew what it was. It was they were so people were so stupid sometimes. It's a it's a, a machine thing. You put your slacks in and you shut the thing and clamp it down, and it has two buttons on the top, 15 or 30 seconds, and it presses your pants in 15 or 30 seconds. It completely presses like slacks or jeans or whatever. And it, 
it didn't have a price on it. The girl's like, uh, how about five bucks? <laughs> it's like, bring it to me. <laughs> five bucks for that machine, bring it to me, you know. That machine's probably a hundred bucks. I got it for five dollars. Uh, another one real quick before I go, Tommy Bahama. You guys see anything as Tommy Bahama? Buy him. Tommy Bahama will make money, okay? Every time on Tommy Bahama. Uh, that's about all the clothes I'll do tonight. Um, is that Ohio Oh, Ohio State? Oh, crap. I didn't know, sorry. <laughs> Ohio State or... That is Ohio State. Yeah, Oklahoma State's orange. Duh. <laughs> yeah, Ohio, Ohio, it's Ohio State. Sorry, yeah. What did I say, Oklahoma State? Yeah, Oklahoma State's... Uh, aren't they orange? Orange and white? Yeah, my bad. You're right, you're right. My bad. Uh, Ohio State, yeah. Uh, messenger's business. Uh, usually, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you real quick right here. If I'm if I'm at a if I'm at a thing, I put my little glass. These are just five dollar magnifying glasses I get at Walmart. Okay, basically they're five ninety eight or something. I just put them on real quick. When I, when they're on the hanger, all I do is first of all I look at the brand right off. I can see them on the hanger on the rack. I just keep slowing through it as oh there's Tommy. So I pull the Tommy out. Okay, the first thing I do is look for all the buttons. Okay. So I'll tell you how fast I can do it. I just look at the buttons. Okay, buttons are here. Buttons are there. Buttons are here. Okay, I look for sweat stains. Nothing there. Okay, and then I look real close and look for any kind of cigarette burns, ballpoint marks, tears. Okay, anything. That's about it. I'm done. About a half a minute to a minute, okay? Um... Usually I look I look for brand first, then I look for buttons, then I look for sweat stains. Oh, sweat stains are going to be collar, definitely your armpits, and sometimes they're right around the cuffs. Okay, inside cuffs. Okay. Uh, once I do the when I when I do the brand, buttons, cufflinks, and then I look for holes. The only time I really ever see any holes or anything is usually in sports coats, due to the fact that they have like a little nick in it or a cigarette burn or something like in a sports coat. But like most of these shirts. Um, you know, really, polos I, I can look at real fast, but like most of these dress shirts, guys, like this is another uh, Tommy one. This one, you can tell they just put it out because it's like, it's been like in a ball. It's completely wrinkled. So somebody had it like in a ball like this, you know. This is what they had it. and Because when I got off the hanger, it looked just like this. Completely like in a ball. So basically, like I said, I, I look for the buttons. Uh, it's got all the, you know, this, this one has a double collar, so it's got buttons on the collar here. Um, look for those. Make sure that they're... Let's see here, that one there. Yeah, see these one here, you gotta make sure that has these side buttons, okay? This collar comes down, you wanna make sure that has that side button for the collar, okay? And then I look for the brand, make sure that brand's there and all the tags are on there. Cause you wanna take pictures of the tags, okay? And then basically I look through it real quick, make sure there's no tears. Uh, there's hardly been any that I bought and that I haven't done a good job on them, okay? Looking at them, okay? Okay, this one looks good, I mean it's, uh, yeah, the only thing I ever see on sport usually I see sports coats, they don't have a lot of buttons. Some of them are missing buttons or tears or the tags ripped off or something like that. But other than that, usually less than a minute for me to look through a shirt. Uh, like I said, I probably looked through probably, uh, I went to a Goodwill and two thrift stores today, and I probably went through probably a thousand shirts. No, 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 no bull crap. And I ended up getting what, 100 or 50 or 70 of them. So you can see a lot of the other ones. Doesn't mean that the other ones aren't going to make you money. It's just that right now I don't want to spend, I don't want to buy IZODs and, you know, and um, Joshua Banks. You know, Joshua Banks has a good shirt. It's called the Traveler's Club Action. It's a good shirt, uh, but you're going to have to pair it up. I mean, you'll get like maybe 18, 19, 20 bucks for a Joshua Banks Traveler, sometimes 20 to 25. Uh, but I know what these, I know what I'm going to get for these. Uh, if you stick with your name brand stuff like this, you'll get 25 to 75 a shirt. Um, like I said, if you get Charvettes, 60 to 80. Stefano Ricci, 100 to 500. I've seen I've seen them sell, sell those Stefano Ricci's. I've seen them sell from 110 to 450 on eBay. Um, same thing with sports coats. Sports coats you can get, of course, your bigger name. You can get Oscar de la Renta. You can get Orvis, Wimbledon. Uh, I, I buy a lot of Brooks Brothers 346s. Sports coats. I have a, a lot of uh, purple labels. Ralph Lauren's. I got the basic Ralph Lauren's. I've got, um, yeah, what else? Brooks Brothers. I've got so many different sports coats. It's ridiculous. A lot of them, now the thing is, what I do is when I'm out, what, what, what's going to be beneficial towards me if I do a course or something is 
I take pictures of every single label that I don't know who it is. Just say I'm looking at a shirt or a sports coat, and I'm like, who in the heck is that? You know, some kind of, it says made in Italy, but I have no idea who it is. Even though I look it up on my eBay phone, it doesn't say anything, I'll snap a picture of it. So when I come back, when I make a binder, I'm going to take my SD card. I'm just going to take it up to Walmart and print out all the pictures on my SD card. They charge you like 30 cents a picture or something like that. And I'll have a file folder of all the, all the pictures of the, of the labels, okay? That'll help my employees when I do hire them. Uh, but there's a lot of names out there that I have no idea who they are. Same thing with shirts. There are shirts, uh, dress shirts I don't know. I have no idea who the names are. Well, another one I see a lot is Alan Flusser. Al, he, he, he logos his shirt. Alan Flusher. Yeah. He logos his shirt right here. Big across the, the whole shirt. There's none of this, but it's all across here is his name. Real nice stenciled in cursive right here. It's called Alan Flusher. Uh, I never bought any of his shirts. Uh, Robert Graham. You guys see a Robert Graham shirt? Good money, fifty to hundred for a Robert Graham. Uh, you don't, you won't see a lot of those, and you won't see a Keaton very often. I, I kitten, kitten, Keaton, Cotton, Kitten, K I T O N. I haven't seen a sports coat or a shirt yet. Uh, I know those are going to go fifty to two hundred uh, for Keaton. So, um, um, uh, let me let me scroll back, guys. On these, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go have. I haven't had dinner yet. Let me scroll up real, real quick. Check all the messages. Dry-O works great for home dry cleaning. Okay, Dry-O. I've never even done home dry cleaning before. Yeah, okay. I never knew that. That's still water. I have it right here for my machine. My Echo Pro he has to use the still water. Okay. There you go. Thanks a lot. Thanks. No problem. I'm just trying to be helpful, guys. Oops. <laughs> yeah, most of my dry cleaners down here, they do it in bulk. you got to put them on a wire hanger. Um, they have to be on a wire hanger for them to do it. So, um, if you have them on a wire hanger, you're good to go. Um, you got to bring them in on a hanger though. Uh, otherwise they won't charge, they'll charge you like a dollar 35 or something like that. I can day trade 24 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I can do the day trade. Uh, the thing with day trading is that you have volatility in the mornings. You have a, you know, at the open with that, what I trade that's at the open. Usually uh, most of your volatility is going to be at the open between 9 and 12. Um, but I can basically, I can trade right now. I can get up at 3 in the morning and day trade. Um, you can day trade 24 hours a day. Um, there's not a lot of movement. Um, you know, I may start, one of my guys, that, that he's my my uh, my trading advisor. He's, he's coming out with a new program called Scalping. It's a scalp trade where you, I only I only day trade the, the mini S&P 500. And uh, I have options and commodities. I trade a lot of options and commodities. I don't trade the futures, I trade options. But in the scalping, when his scalping method he teaches, it's uh, you, you scalp the S&P 500 one to three ticks, which is only a couple points up or down, like one or two points. But when you're trading four to ten contracts at a time, one tick or two ticks is going to be, you know, two to three hundred dollars every tick. And that's usually, those ticks will happen in a minute or two. Um, thing is, you know, it's a lot of volatility and, and, and options. I mean, and especially with, with commodities or day trading, you know. You could you could do very well and you could do very bad. You don't want to have a an, a margin call at the end of the day for five thousand dollars or ten twenty thousand dollar margin call. You have to you know thing with your margin calls is you have to you have to pay up at the end of the day otherwise you your account's closed. Uh, so basically, a lot of times you know I recommend if anybody does it, I can give you the guys that my investor and stuff. But you, you basically if you want to day trade, you're gonna have to learn what you want to do and then day trade, paper trade. You actually paper trade, which is basically the same thing. Use live market feedback, which you paper trade for about two to three months. Get the feel for the system, how to work your charts, how to use your trend analysis, how do you do your, use your indicators, your tick methods. You know how to use all those things before you throw out you know five or six you know five or ten thousand dollars because most of these uh, trading accounts you're going to have to have at least five to twenty thousand just to even open an account. So um, I do love day trading. I do. Um, I just. What I want to do is, you know, I know where I want to be in a year or two. Uh, I basically want to live, starting next year, I want to live half the year in my home in Belize. Uh, so for me to get there, I need to have other sources of income besides day trading. Day trading, I'll be able to do it in Belize. But I want to be able to have a business where eBay is up and running, where I'm doing, you know, four or 500000 a year on eBay. And then same thing with Amazon. You know, I did a hundred, uh, I did 109000 this year on Amazon, and I really didn't, really didn't work hard at all. I, was all by myself, uh, you know. I made one hundred nine thousand dollars, so uh, that was my that was uh, my tax return or what what Amazon said I made. So uh, usually I bring home you know almost nine thousand dollars a month with Amazon. So uh, and my bills are only 
you know, maybe $2,200 total. So I do very well uh, on Amazon. It's just, for me, I'm at the point where I need to outsource it. That's the only thing. And I just, when you don't trust people, you know, you ha I have to get over that factor of not trusting people. So once I do that, then I'll, I'll be good to go and I'll be able to uh, outsource it quite a bit. Uh, first thing probably with eBay and then eventually with, um, with, with Amazon. But uh, yeah, Amazon, like I said, they're, they're so fickle sometimes. You never know what you're going to get with Amazon. They could say, okay, one week, well, you know, I may get a letter next week saying, hey, we're going to stop. You can't sell CDs no more. And then basically I'm out of CDs. So um, I may get that letter too. I, you know, who knows? Amazon may come up and say, hey, if you're not a distributor, you can't sell DVDs anymore. You know, so you never know with Amazon. And you do not want to have Amazon be your only money source. So say you're doing, you've been with Amazon, your, your feedback's 100%. You never had an agency claim. I've never, my feedback's 99%. Never had another feedback. What happens? You wake up in the morning and they, they send you an email saying, sorry, we have a discrepancy in your account. We're going to shut your account down. And you have no more money coming in. I mean, you're, you're going from making 10000 a month to, holy crap, how am I going to pay my mortgage next month? You know, So that's why you want to, you want to, you want to venture into other sources besides Amazon. Because Amazon, like I said, even when you're doing, when I'm doing Shopify, I own that customer. Once I Shopify and add them to my email list on Shopify, I own that customer's email. Amazon, you have no say. They're they're not your customer on Amazon. You're basically just supplying supplying your product, and you're paying Amazon to market it and ship it. It's a it's a lazy way of doing it. You know, and you're shipping your product on Amazon, and they do all that. And they take their, you know, with books, they take fifty to seventy five percent sometimes now with the shipping and everything. They take they take close to anything basically under ten dollars. You're taking close to eighty percent of your money uh, with shipping and shipping and that stuff. So, um, you know, uh, Amazon changes all the time. So yeah, I would not. I tell this to everybody. I would not make Amazon my main business. You, you need to, you know, think about venturing over into doing something, some other things besides Amazon. Uh, if, you know, if you're doing only Amazon, start a little eBay business. Get you, you know, start if they give you a hundred items, just do a little thrift. But go buy, go buy ten or fifteen or twenty items at, at a thrift store. Get you, you'll make money if you list it right, and you don't go eight crap with your price. You'll make money. You'll you'll sell your items. Okay. And then just multiply that. But you do not want to be where you're just only on Amazon and then they send you a letter saying, I'm sorry, your account's been suspended. And we're going to hold your money for 90 days. Trust me, you'll get that letter if they do that. We're going to suspend your account or your account is under review. It's on suspension. Your account is under review. We are holding your funds for anywhere between 45 and 90 days. And then if they suspend you, you have to pay to get your inventory back. Uh, 50 cents an item. I had 5,000 items. It would cost me $2,600 to get my stuff back. So, you know, I'm just saying, guys. Yeah, I'm just saying. Sorry. Take pictures laid out on a mannequin. Do your kind of... Yeah, I'm going to do all the pictures and everything on the video on the mannequins. Um, there's a certain way to do it. You can do pictures different ways on the... Uh, I bought this a couple of days ago on Amazon. It's a folder for your shirts. It's called the Wonder Fold. You know, it's one of these little things that you fold your shirt in real quick right here. You can do your shirts two ways. You can do your shirts this way. I see a lot of guys doing shirts this way. I see a lot of guys doing shirts on a mannequin. I may do both. I may put it on the mannequin first, and then you can fold the shirt in like less than a minute doing this, okay? And I may do the fold shirt like this where you fold it like this, and then you put the arm in front of it where they can see the rolled up cuff right here. I may do that too to upsell it too, okay? And then I use a program called Turbo uh, Crazy Lister. It does, a, does your format real nice. It's called Crazy, Crazy Lister. It's another thing I use. Uh, for eBay for listings, so um, yeah. No, you don't want a more margin call. <laughs> day trading is very disciplined. I mean, people want me to do videos for it, and they, they want me to coach them on day trading. I've been day trading since '89, 25 years, you know. And uh, options, commodities. You'll see gold. Gold's pretty much going to retreat pretty soon. Um, oil's down to 47 a barrel. You know, I don't see oil ever getting above 50 again. Uh, honestly, uh, there's such a glut in the oil right now, so. Uh, Everything's going to solar, you know, so uh, I try to take the lamb and not air top. Yep. Yeah, what's uh, in the sunny by the beach? Yeah. You have to tell me what your name is. <laughs> yeah, textbooks. Uh, you can do textbooks. I mean, my buddy, good buddy of mine, Caleb Roth, he uh, he, he runs eFlip, software program that does eFlip. And you can do, uh, I think his program does books, CDs, and uh, records or something like that. And uh Books are okay. Uh, they're not a, they're not a fast mover though. Um, I mean, I do sell books every day, but they're not. I don't. I've never bought a textbook. Uh, they're basically cookie cutter books. You know, ten to twelve, fifteen dollar books. You know, 
after you sell a fourteen dollar book, you're gonna make like five bucks, six bucks, you know. So, uh, you know, before you used to make gravy train with books. Now I know a lot of guys have gotten out of books completely because once they hit that, you know, anything basically under ten bucks, you're gonna make like two bucks after you sell that book for ten dollars. So. Uh, that's why a lot of people, I got a lot of people going into media and then they ban media. So what I tell all my followers, I got almost 2000 people following me, you know, and, and now you got a, you got, everybody got banned with DVDs first in November 15th of last year. And then everybody got hit with the CDs and now everybody's getting hit and hit hitting again with the CDs. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel bad and I'm ungated and everything. So, um. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I, I work my butt off for what I've gotten. I mean, I've got ungated and everything because my metrics are good. So, I mean, um, yeah. Buy a house in Dallas, yeah. It's a good place. Dallas is not bad. Uh, the housing, real estate's really good. I mean, they've gone up a lot in prices, really, because everybody's, you know, everybody's going crazy down here. But, but the cost of living is really good down here. Like, I live in a real nice apartment. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath. Really nice. I pay. Uh, I do pay a lot for it. I pay like fourteen hundred dollars for it. But um, I don't need a house. Uh, the only reason I didn't buy a house yet is because I'm not married. I don't have any girlfriends right now. Um, for me, right now, I spend my most of my money on not drugs. I wouldn't say drugs, but um, most of my you know because I'm a big muscle workout guy, and a lot of times you know I'm I'm 48, so. Uh, there's like my back hurts a little bit sometimes. So I need to go see a back specialist and I, I don't have any insurance because I had Obamacare last year, but I made 160 something thousand dollars last year. So eBay and, and my day trading that cause a lot of my day trading, I, I can't show the profits because I'll get taxed for it. So I roll it into a 1031 exchange on something else. That's how I rolled it into my house in Belize. I, I used, um, all the profits that I made last year and, and, you know, Bought the bought the the lot and everything for like seventy four thousand dollars on on Belize and I used it at a ten thirty one tax exchange so I wouldn't be you know taxed thirty five percent so, um, but you know like I said well you know my back's hurting a little bit and then, uh my chest hurts a lot so I need to have my heart checked and all that and then, um uh I'm on growth hormone which is like a for anti aging uh but it's like a thousand dollars a month and then uh, my testosterone I'm on testosterone for anti aging also and it's you know, fifty, hundred dollars a month, and I'm on modafinil, which is a smart drug, and uh, that's that's only like eighty dollars a month. So, you know, that's where my money goes is more like medication and stuff like that. But I don't drink, I don't smoke, you know, don't do any kind of pot or coke or none. Of that. I've never done any of that stuff. So, that's where most of my money goes. And then my house in Belize. So, um, you know, and then I bought the travel agents. I want to cruise. So basically, the next couple months, the way I want to get it is I want to basically. Um, uh, I want to basically go on a cruise every four to six weeks. And down here in Galveston, they, they, go, out of, yeah, they go out of Galveston, which is about a seven-hour drive. Otherwise, they can fly down there pretty cheap from Southwest. And uh, cruises are about three fifty. So basically, a four-day cruise is three hundred fifty dollars. So I want to do that basically every four to six weeks, uh, starting next month. So uh, and I'll shoot videos and stuff like that for me doing it. I'll shoot a video on the cruise and all that. And uh, it's gonna be a good way for me to recharge. And plus, I'll be able to get my, put my dogs in a kennel. I've been uh, looking at dog kennels, uh, like the real nice boarding facilities. They have these, it's amazing. You take your dogs down, they have their own rooms. They have their own little beds. They have their own, they put music on for them. And they basically, uh, they have cameras in the thing. So you can, I can log in on my phone. If I'm on a cruise and make Cozumel, and I can look at my dog sitting in his room on the CCTV camera and, and make sure he's okay. So uh, it's pretty cool boarding facilities. That's the thing is, my, my, you know, I worry about my dogs. They never, they've never been away from me for more than like three days. Now, especially the puppy. He's only eight months old. So, um, uh, you know, it's not, you know, you gotta, you gotta, even though you have money, guys, I mean, I'm telling you, I see all these people make money and they're not, so a lot of these guys, they're not happy. I mean, you can make a million dollars a month after you pay your bills. If you don't have a purpose to why you're doing it, if you're not living or doing stuff or traveling, no matter how many zeros you have in the bank, it's not going to change anything. I mean, you know, I do very well. And, um, you know, when, like I said, I don't have a girlfriend. I, I miss being with somebody, but, uh, yeah, I know what I'm looking for. But, I mean, um, when you don't have people to share it with, it's uh, the money gets kind of, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, my bills are paid all the way up to July now. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, the money, for me now, that's why I do eBay and Amazon. It's a game to me to see how much better I can, how much better I can do over the previous month. You know what I mean? So say last month I I, I sold seventeen thousand dollars on gross in Amazon. Okay, well, 
I know I sold, you know, however many units, okay, my units. So sometimes I'll, I'll try to do a better uh, cost per unit or I'll try to do, okay, I did 17, I want to do 20,000 this month. So I figure, okay, for me to do 20,000, I need to send in about, a, about, you know, I need to get my inventory up to like 6,500 items, okay. So basically I'll know, okay, right now i got 5,112 to get to 6,100 and I'm selling 300 items a week, you know. So you got to figure, okay, I need to send in, you know, you know, 1,100 items every week to get to that number or, you know, roughly something like that. So uh, to me, more, it's more, more like a game now. I mean, like I said, once you make your money and you do well financially, it's just, it's all about, you know, a, a system to how you can uh, have purpose and, and a reason why you're getting up every day. If you don't have a reason why to do what you're doing, if you're, do, you're getting up saying, oh, I just want to make money, you'll burn out. I mean, I want to tell you, you'll burn out. For me, I enjoy sourcing. I like going to stores and saying, okay, I bought this shirt for $2.00. I know this puppy's selling for 30 bucks. I'll just rinse and repeat, you know. And like I said, once you build the system and you take your pictures and you figure out how to do it, you know, the, the best thing you can do in life is to hire people. Give other people a chance to, to have the American dream, you know, build build things for themselves. There's a lot of people out there that don't, you know, don't, don't have a good job. They have to work at McDonald's or some crap like that where there's nobody else's, you know, nobody else's, you know, my daughter was working for me. I was paying her $15 an hour, you know, even though she had to drive 55 miles to get to me, you know, uh, She's, you know, 21 years old, you know, she, you know, but my daughter, she's not a good employee. She's, she's, she's 21 years old. So, I mean, uh, you know, if you want to do in the, this kind of business, I mean, you know, like I said, E. Mitt Mashbury, he talks about building, hiring, making a, making a franchise. He, well, if you ever, guys ever listen to Michael Gerber, the E. Myth, he talks about how you build a franchise where you use the, the, the basic employees and you make a system where it's kind of idiot proof. Well, this way it's the same kind of thing. I mean, you basically say, okay, these are the shirts you, I want you to buy. There's 25 brands of shirts. I only want you to buy these 25 brands of shirts. I don't care how much you pay for them, but I want to. I want you to buy these 25 brands of shirts. I will pay you $2.50 a shirt. Every shirt you bring me, I'm going to give you $2.50. And I'm going to give you a gift card every day at Walmart. I'm going to go to Walmart and get you a basic Visa card. And you're going to $100 limit. Okay, and you bring me back $100 worth of shirts. Okay? Pretty simple. And then what you do is... Say you that say you get into where you can't do it all, hire you a part-time photographer to take the pictures, okay? And then what you do is you have a program like Crazy Lister. You just use a basic template format. You type in the okay Brooks Brothers, and then you white it out and type in Polo Ralph Lauren shirts and everything. You hire somebody to do all your listing for you. So basically, it goes from me. In in two months, it's going to go where I'm not doing any of this, okay? It's going to go from me getting in my car, going to Thrift City, Thrift Mart. Goodwills, all the little, you know, little rinky dinky thrift stores to where I pay somebody to do that. I pay one or two or three people to do that. They bring me all the clothes. And if I want to do it, I can. Otherwise, I'll hire a part time photographer. I will take the mannequin to their house. I will drop the clothes off every day at them and say, I need you to do these photos. I will give you a dollar fifty a shirt or whatever. You know, figure, I have to figure something out. If they want to charge, you know, $200 a week. Pay them two hundred dollars a week to take, you know, they can do all that Photoshop crap and all that. And then basically, once I get big enough, I'll hire somebody. Basically, their job is to list those items, and everything will be on an Excel spreadsheet, you know. And you know how what I paid, how much I paid, the date I paid, how long it took to sell, the profit, eBay fees, PayPal fees, shipping fees, and gross profit. Okay. Once you treat it like a business, guys, and you don't treat it like a mom and pop shop. Once you treat it like a business, you open up an LLC. Get your EIN number, get your business phone number, get your web address, start building business credit, and then you'll, eventually you'll get American Express Platinum like I have. You'll get all these business cards that basically I can go out and I can charge a half a million dollars on my platinum card right now, you know, but I got to pay it off. So, <laughs> but you don't want to do, you don't want to put like labor on your platinum card. You don't want to put like all this other crap on your card. So, to me, I'm just, uh, you know, it's just, this is all new to me. So, I'm kind of working on the kinks and, I don't pay these gurus $1,997 to learn something. I kind of just watch hours and hours and hours of YouTube and uh, figure it out. Nobody, nobody told me when I first started how to do CDs. I just thought, hell, there's got to be a reason. That, there's got to be an easier way than, you know, buying these CDs and they're all hammered and you can't, you know. I was the first one I think I knew that on, on Facebook or YouTube, that uh, Facebook, that would, uh, you know, repair CDs. I mean, there were some bigger companies that did it, but I was... When I put it out there and I started my page last year or two years ago, uh, there's people like, why are you repairing CDs? You're not going to make any money. And I'm like, okay, well, let me show you a reason why. Say, say you get this video game right here. 
Okay, this is a uh, PS... No, let me give you this one here. Okay. Say you get this video game, it's a PS2 The Incredibles, okay? Say you open it up, like this game has no... It scratches on the CD, no artwork, no nothing, okay? Well, let me give you a better example, sorry. Let me give you a better example, okay. All right. All right, like, like this one here, okay? This is a PS2 in, NHL 07, okay? Say you get this and you don't have any machine at all, okay? And you look at the CD, scratches all over it, okay? Artwork's there. Case, the case is all got stickers on it. It's all down here and there and there and all, okay? So basically, you can only sell this as very good. Uh, you got to take the sticker off, try to peel it off and all this crap. So what I do is I basically refurbish the CD, the brand new, make sure it plays. I change out the case, and sometimes I'll overwrap it, okay? Rewrap it again. I'll take that thing from very good, very good, you'll get five bucks maybe, and I'll put it on, I'll put it to like new, you know, and uh, make double almost, probably, you know, almost double. So a lot of times people always ask me all the time, why did you repair CD? Why do you recase? Why do you, why do you do music? Like, why do you get, um, let me show you a CD here real quick. I don't know. I'm just gonna grab one of these CDs here on the ground. Nutcracker Suites, you know. Why do you why do you get that and recase it and everything? Well, if you get a CD and you send it into Amazon, their Amazon's terms of services, if it's got scratches or anything, or the case is mixed up, good or very good. Okay. Well, I recase that CD. I, there, the case cost me 17 cents. I fix the CD for seven cents. I'm into. I'm basically out the door for this CD for 50 cents, and I can go from good to like new for basically 50 cents. That's the cost of the CD, the case, and the repair for me is 50 cents. I buy these CDs for 15 cents a piece usually. So I'm out the door for this CD for 50 cents. So I got 50 cents in one hand, okay? And I'm selling that CD for seven to ten dollars in this hand. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You know, it's you know, but most people the biggest moan and groan I heard about is that that's too much too much work. Guys, you gotta work. You're not gonna be able to lay in bed. Watch Netflix for 10 hours and think you're going to make $1,000 a day. I mean, I make $750 to $800 a day on Amazon. Gross sales, I'm not going to, I'm only clearing probably $450 or $500. But I work every day, 12 hours a day, you know, to keep bringing that flow in. You know, like I said, if you, if, you know, right now I've got 5,100 items at Amazon. So basically say, okay, I've got 5,100 items and I, I've been averaging the last five months, six months, between 16. Well, actually, I went down to 15 one month. 15, three, up to 20,000 a month, every month in gross sales. You figure Amazon's going to take probably, with the books now, they're probably taking close to 60%. So basically, cut that in half, okay? Okay. And then you got to figure your cost of goods and supplies, okay? So basically, say I'm making, uh, say 18, okay? Say I bring home 18, which is normally bring home, eight, yeah, gross is 18,000. I'll bring home nine minus my uh, cost of goods. And, uh, so I'm bringing home like 79, profiting like 8,000 a month, okay? Um, so say basically, I know, I know I'm know i doing those figures. This is not just an if. I'm doing that figure. I'm doing these figures every single month for the last probably 13 months. Every single month, it's like that. One month, I got my inventory to, to uh, 8,000, and I did $23,000 $23, a month. But now I kind of slowed down. I'm back to like 5,100. Plus, when they had the book purge, I, bur I purged almost 2,000 books. So basically, you get all those numbers, and that's what happens. You get all those numbers, and basically, I know basically for me to sell twenty thousand dollars an item, uh, twenty thousand on Amazon a month, I have fifty one hundred items that are all. I would say probably eighty percent of them is video game media, twenty percent is books. Okay, so I know basically, if I want to double that, I need to have ten to twelve thousand items at Amazon. When I get to ten to twelve thousand items at Amazon, I'll be doing a thousand, thousand to twelve hundred dollars every day just multiplying that number. Now this is not a if or a gimme or maybe so or it might be. I've done these numbers for the last 13 or 14 months. And I know for a fact, because I'm usually the lowest FBA priced item. Um, that's why I, I move a lot of product. Um, I undercut Amazon like nine cents. I undercut all the FBA offers by three cents. So I'm usually the lowest FBA. If there's not a merchant offer, if there's a merchant offer and no FBA, I mark it up 35%. I don't match MF. There's no reason to match MF. You're stupid if you're going to match MF with your FBA. If you want to give away, give away your item and you want to match MF, go right ahead. But I don't match MF at all anymore. I do 35%. Uh, so say an item's um, 
ten dollars on Amazon on Merchant Fulfilled, I'll list it. For, I'll list mine for thirteen to fifteen, fifteen bucks, something like that. So, and I I use Be Cool, Be Cool. They do all my repricing, so I never touch it. It's automatically done, you know. Uh, so, um, it's the one thing that's outsourced. I, I outsource my accounting. I use a company called Bitch.com. I do my personal accounting with a, um, a GoDaddy bookkeeping. Um, and then I double it up with Bitch.com. They charge $125 a month. And I do my my sales tax quarterlies and all that crap. So I don't have to do any of that. Outsource it all. I mean, once you guys make enough money and you want to do certain things in life, outsource the crap you don't want to do. I have maids come clean my apartment every Thursday. They charge me 50 bucks. If I'm lazy enough and I want to work all day, I have Amazon Prime now. If I need soda, if I want to drink some sodas, I'll have them bring me three or four cases of sodas. They charge you $5 delivery. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, outsource a lot of the crap you don't want to do, okay? You know, I, I enjoy, like I said, I enjoy going to thrift stores, uh, but I don't enjoy spending two or three hours a day at a thrift store. Because you got to bring your water, and then half the women don't have air conditioning, and you're sweating your butt off in there, and it stinks, and you got to wipe your hands off with wet naps, and, you know... It, you know, it's fun. The sourcing part's fun. I mean, because you know, you know, basically, I know when I'm at a store, okay, and I know if I'm at a store and I see this Tommy Hilfiger shirt, I know, hey, 25 bucks in this hand right here. I know it's coming. 25 in this hand, I'm paying, okay, I'm paying, uh, this was seven, I paid 350 in this hand, and I know it's going to sell for 25. Give me 150 of these puppies, you know, and, uh, you know, like I said, if you guys don't want to press them, Find a dry cleaners and say, hey, how can I, how, if I bring you 100 of these a week, 50 of these a week, and I bring them on metal hangers, what kind of deal can you cut me, okay? Just talk to them. That's the way I do it with estate sales and, and auctioneer people. I tell them basically straight up. I say, hey, man, you know, I went to a garage sale, and the guy had like 100 pairs of shoes. I said, how much do you give me for, if I take all the shoes? And he's like, oh, I, I can't do that, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, fine, you know. But a lot of times you go to those estate sales, and they say, hey, uh, I see you have a lot of CDs here and, and DVDs and all this. Uh, what do you do if I just take all of them? And they're like, oh, uh, 15 bucks? <laughs> okay, good. You know, it's the same thing. Like I said, if you don't want to press these shirts, outsource it. Even Add it into your cost of goods, okay? So say, okay, let, let's do another thing, okay? So say this shirt, I, that my, my employees buy this shirt and it's $3.50, okay? So they buy this shirt at the thrift store, $3.50. I pay them $2 to buy it. So I'm into the shirt for $5.50, okay? And I don't want them to press. I'll still do the listings. I don't want them to press it. I'll, I'll have them press for a dollar, okay? I'm into the shirt for six to fifty, okay? I still sell the shirt for twenty-five minus my fees. I'm still making probably fourteen or fifteen bucks on that shirt, or twelve dollars or whatever. Just if you don't want to do the pressing yourself, add it into your cost of goods. That's 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 how you you know, that's how you make. That's how you could do instead of doing twenty items a week, you can do one hundred and fifty items a week. Add it into your cost of goods. Most people, you guys can't stay thinking small. Do not stay thinking small. Okay, well, you know, I see these guys on YouTube. I'm not going to name any names. I'm just going to say these guys on YouTube, and they talk about, well, I listed five items today. How come you didn't list 30? You know, how come you didn't list 20? I listed, well, it takes me an hour to list five items. I'm like, then you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong, buddy. I mean, if, literally, if you want to do the thing, if you don't want to, if you want to be lazy, have all your shirts pressed that come in a hanger, okay? You go go get your shirts pressed for eighty nine cents or a dollar twenty a shirt, okay? Add it into your profit margin, okay? I spent twenty dollars on twenty shirts pressed for a dollar. I was out no time at all, not one time, not one time at all did I do that, okay? So basically, take your shirt, okay? Take it uh, right here. It's called Dry Cleaner USA or something. Take twenty shirts there tomorrow. I'll have them back that night. If I take them by eight, I'll have them back by five, okay? They're gonna cost me like twenty three, twenty two dollars, okay? Take your shirt, add it into your add it into your profit. Okay, instead of, instead of me making sixteen dollars after fees, I made fourteen dollars, but I did not spend one minute pressing that shirt. It would take me probably three or four minutes. So basically, you're trying to you know the way you the way you have to look it up here is okay. Do I want to spend three or four minutes ironing my own shirt, or do I want to pay somebody a dollar to do it? So imagine if I sit home and I stayed home like tomorrow. Say I stayed home and I ironed 20 shirts and it took me an hour and a half, okay? An hour and a half of my time instead of spending $20 for the dry cleaners to do it for you, you know? It's just it's just added, in, added into your profit, okay? You can't be so greedy that say, okay, well, like the polos are completely different, guys. The polos are different, okay? Polos, 
You can just wash them and just hang them real quick and steam them and they're good to go. I'm talking about dress shirts. Sports coats, you don't have to do anything to. Basically, you put them on a hanger, they self-unwrinkle. Sports coats, you have nothing to do. Basically, the dress shirts are up in ties, and nothing. Shoes, same thing with shoes, guys, okay? Say I've got a bunch of crappy shoes, okay? Uh, there's shoes in the other room, okay? Say you don't want to polish them, nothing, okay? Go down to where I have. I went down to talk to the guy's name's Jesus. Little Mexico guy, little small 400-foot square shoe place. They repair shoes. Boots, shoes, zapatos, botas. You know, botas is Mexican for boots, zapatos, and shoes, okay? I told him, I went in there and said, hey, I need a, how much you buff, cuanto es, I said, cuanto es uh, uh, buff zapatos? And he's like, basically, uh, $5, $4. If you, and he said, they, they look immaculate when he's done with them, okay? Same thing with shoes, guys. You know that, say that, say you're buying these shoes right here, guys. Outsource that crap. I'm telling you. You're buying these shoes. Basically, I paid, what? These were $8.98. I paid $4 for these shoes, okay? And these are in good condition. I don't have to do anything to these, except maybe wipe them off of water. But say you get some shoes, and they've got scuffs and marks all over them and all this, and they need to, like, say I have a couple pairs of shoes. They need this whole this whole thing needs to be replaced right here, okay? But say that's an Allen Edmonds shoe, and they go for $100 to $150. And uh, you, most people would pass it up and say, oh, that shoe, I ain't buying that shoe. The whole the whole seal's gone. They'll resell, if you go to like one of those little Mexico places, they'll resell this whole shoe for 10 bucks. And they'll buff it for you for free. Outsource all. If you don't want to buff any shoes, take them all there and make a deal with the guy. Say, okay, I've got 10 pairs. I'll send you 10 pairs of shoes every week. How much you charge me to buff and buff? How much would you charge me to buff 25 pairs of shoes a week? He'll probably come down to three or four or five dollars a pair. But you're getting those shoes for four dollars. You're selling those shoes for fifty to sixty, forty, thirty, whatever you're selling them for. Add it into your profit margin, okay? You can't be greedy. I mean, I see a lot of guys on YouTube. They're sitting there with their wife and they're buffing these shoes and cleaning them and uh, that's horse crap, guys. That's BS. If you, I don't, I'm not going to spend uh, thirty-five minutes buffing a shoe. Send it to a guy and pay him four dollars to buff it, five dollars to buff it. You know, they're not going to charge you more than. Probably five or ten bucks to buff a shoe. I and mean, they're just buffing the shoe. I mean, you go to New York and they'll buff it for three dollars. I mean, and they'll sit there, you put it in a chair, and they'll buff the whole shoe, and they'll have it done in like less than five minutes. I mean, um, but you know, I see a lot of that. I see a lot of people that holds up their progress as due to the fact that um, they basically they want to do all the work themselves. So say you, you know, I see a lot of guys. There's one guy in Dallas here. I don't, I haven't met him yet. Tino or Tono or some. He buys up near me. He he's a, he he spends more of his time up in North Dallas, which is the uh, I call it the highfalutin area. And he goes to places like Plato's Closet and uh, a couple of these other places where they got like high dollar stuff. I'm in Little Mexico. I go to places that don't have any air conditioning. I get some. I hate to say it, damn good deals there though. I get really good deals there. And uh, so basically, that's what you do. So say say you want to do just dress shirts. You want to just start with dress shirts, okay? I will give you a list of 25 dress shirts. Where you will make over twenty-five dollars if you price it at twenty-four ninety-five, you can get twenty-four ninety-five up to forty bucks. Okay, and if I give you that list and that's all you go shop at, take that list to any thrift store. I guarantee you, you're going to make twenty-four dollars to fifty if you do what I tell you. If you want to spend it, take this shirt to a dry cleaners. You know, uh, say hey, I got I got these wire. A lot of times they'll make you bring it on a wire hanger. You have to wash it. You can wash it yourself. Okay, wash it in cold water, tumble dry low. Take it on a wire hanger just like this, and they will basically press the shirt for a dollar. You don't need them to starch it and all that like the Western crap and where it stands up by itself. You just basically need a nice starch, a uh, nice press, okay? <coughs> you know, you take 30 shirts and they'll have them 30 done in a day, you know? So just add it into your cost of goods. I mean, I, that, a lot of people think small up here. I watch a lot of YouTube, and I see a lot of stupid mistakes, you know? If a, if a guy buys 60 or 70 or 100 pairs of shoes, why would you buff those shoes? Yes, I mean, it may cost you 3 or $4 to have somebody else do it or 5 bucks, But you don't have to do any of the work, guys. And another thing I'm going to tell you exactly. Let me see if there's any comments, guys. Uh, try eHarmony. I haven't tried eHarmony, buddy. I've, re I've really uh, I met a lot of English and Russian women. I really like uh, Australian English-speaking people, women especially. Um, I may go over to England and, and try it, you know, go over there. A lot of people don't want to do that. They're, yeah, a lot of people don't want to work. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of people, I'm not going to, not, I'm not going to knock the millennials, but, uh, you know, when I grew up, I was a kid back in the 70s. 
I mowed yards. I hated mowing yards, but that's the only way I could make money, you know. And uh, we, I mean, we used to throw the the thing called the Shoppers News, a little bitty weekly crap paper. A little, you know, we did. We got five cents a house. You remember that five cents a house, and it was, uh, you know, now with with the millennials, everything's free. They they get all their music for free. They get free YouTube videos. They figure out how to hack everything for free. How to get on them, you know? I, we used to, me and my ex-wife used to have Section Eight housing. We used to have like twenty rent homes, and all these, all these, I hate to say it, colored people. I mean, uh, they were on Section Eight. They were driving Mercedes, and uh, like say we were renting a house for a thousand dollars a month. Their voucher would be nine fifty, so that means the government paid nine fifty of their voucher. They would always be late with the fifty dollars. I'm like, come on, you're driving a Mercedes. Come on, how can you be late on a fifty dollar rent? You know. So you get a lot of people that play the system for the government. They want the government to take care of them. And you'll see a lot of time in the future that, you know, the, the medicine's going to be so expensive and everything's going to rely on the government and the government's not going to be able to pay for anything. So I, I think you see a lot of that. You, a lot of people don't want to work anymore. They don't want to, they want to, they see all these people on the internet, especially YouTube. They see all these people on the internet and they's like, oh man, they're, they're living the life. They're traveling and making money every night on Shopify and this and that or e-commerce or tutoring or coaching or whatever don't believe it all don't believe what you see on youtube like you watch a bunch of alien videos about aliens it doesn't mean they're all true <laughs> or Loch Ness monster i watch i watch videos on bigfoot when i'm bored uh it doesn't mean all the bigfoots are out there you know so i mean it's um you got to understand that guys you got to understand that what you see on youtube is not all drill and uh, this business does take time i mean you see like like my buddy rez from uh, rezy resales uh, he does good. He makes, you know, he, he grossed sell to like a million dollars last year, but, it, but, it, you know, he, he's been doing it 10 years and it, it took him, he's got four or five or six people working for him. So if you think that you, you and your wife or you and your girlfriend are going to make half a million dollars or something, eBay or whatever, no, I'm going to be, I hate to say you're not, not going to do it. I mean, uh, you're going to have to get to where you're going to have to outsource and hire other people. And there's nothing wrong with hiring other people. You're, you're just, you know, hire quality people and pay them well. I, I've never seen people, I under, never understood why people pay, you know, that people work their butt off and then, you know, I'll tell you an example. I was in the SEAL teams back in the 90s. I'll tell you a perfect example. We were in Rota, Spain, okay? And uh, we were working with their special ops divers over there. And their divers were getting, I don't know, thousands of dollars a week. And the guy asked us, you know, I was, I was, a, uh, I was an E7, which is a, a, a senior chief. And he's like, um, how much do you guys get paid? And I said, I make $164 a day. $164 a day. He's like, that's it? <laughs> and you're a SEAL team guy? And I said, I get I get a parachute pay. I get hazard duty pay. I get the EOD explosive pay. I get uh, combat pay and all that. And he's like, we're making like $1,400 a day or $1,500 a day. And you're making, I was like, yep, yeah, I'm making $164 a day. So, yeah, and you got to understand, guys, I mean, um, if you hire people, just pay them well, and they will work for you. Don't treat them like a slave. Don't don't treat them like they're beneath you or anything. Don't. If you hire people, they're people. They're humans. Treat them like a human. Just just pay them well. And give them ex specific instructions. Okay, exact instructions. Don't leave it to chance. Okay, if they if you say I give you a list of twenty five shirts to buy, and you can come back with Izod's and Christian Dior, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want Christian Dior. I didn't want Izod's, and I didn't want uh, Bugle Boy. I wanted Brooks Brothers, Pen uh, you know Pendletons. I wanted Polos. You get, you know, if you if you lay it out to your employees and you pay them well, they will never leave you. Now, if you talk bad to them and treat them like crap and don't pay them on time and all that, of course they're going to leave. You know, so it's just um, rules of business. I, I sorry about that rant, guys. Um, uh, stay away from Mesh Lemon. <laughs> All sanitizer, all san stainlifter minty packs. You know, start putting a little bleach in the wash. Yeah, I've never had. Actually, I haven't had any issues with with sweat stains yet. So, um, I bought a new thing. Let me go get it. It's in the kitchen. Let me go get it. And I'll show it to you. Hold on.
All right, guys, I'm going to show you all my clothing stuff, okay? All right. Let me put it all down here. First thing I got was a uh, all my shoe shine stuff, okay? This is a Kiwi Orange and Shamaro. This is a Kiwi Orange, I think. It's called a suede shoe polish. I also got, these are the ones I didn't have. Brown. I got a lot of brown shoes, Kiwi Brown. I guess one is a uh, neutral, neutral color, okay, kiwi. This is what they call a, a shine cloth. I use these all the time. We use these in the military. Shine cloth, you get two of them. This is all crap at Walmart, okay? Shine cloth, okay? These are all, once you put your polish on there and you use a brush, and then what you're going to do is shine it with the shine ray, okay? This was a instant shine. I haven't tried this yet. It supposedly gives an instant shine to your black or black shoes or something like that. It says here. Uh, it's called Instant Shine. Use on any color, leather or vinyl. Wipe sponge over clean saw. No need to buff. I guess it's like a some kind of a wet sponge and it make, makes it all nice and pretty. So I think this is like $3. Okay. I did get a uh, Magic Erasers. These are called Magic Erasers, Mr. Clean. Uh, you can use these. These are really good for basically anything. It gets off uh, anything, really. <laughs> these are called Magic Erasers, okay? And then uh, for, for white shoes, I got this stuff called the Kiwi Whitener. It's a good little thing that's right here. called It'll it'll work on the, like the bottoms of the shoes and the sides of the shoes. Kiwi Whitener. Okay, that's a really good one. And then this is something that a lady told me about. It smells really good. It's called Fells Napta. Okay. It's a laundry bar and a stain remover. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find the thing here. It's called Pure. I get this is all at Walmart. Okay. And she said all you do is basically just... Uh, Wet the stain, rub the bar on it a couple times, wait one minute, and wash off. She says this will get off any stain. It's called the Fells, and this was a dollar. She says this thing, they've been selling this thing, she said, for 60 years, okay? So I'm going to try all that on the shoes. Um, the polish, I know how it works. The polish before, when the military, you could be able to, uh, we used to light the, light, the, light the tent on fire, and uh, light it on fire, and then let the shoe sit, and then buff it out. Uh, we used to be able to spit on the, you know, we had boots, we had combat boots, so we'd basically spit on the boots and all that, and, they would all, and we could make them look like glass. I mean, we could basically see your face in them. Uh, but I'm not, I don't want to do that much work anymore, so. I could do that with one pair of boots, but I could imagine doing, you know, okay, I got 25 pairs of dress shoes to do. I'll pay somebody $4 I'll shoe, so. Uh, that's all the cleaning stuff I got, so. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. Like, like I said, uh. When, I, when I'm out, when I'm out, um, when I'm out uh, talking to people, especially at thrift stores, like I had a, a, an error with one of my charges. They charged me three times. Like I spent a uh, Wednesday, I spent eighty nine thirty seven at the same thrift store I went to today. I looked at my bill the next day, and they charged me three times. So uh, they charged me two hundred seventy four dollars. So I went in there and I talked to the one girl. I always see her, her name's Erica. She's a Hispanic lady. It's it's run by. A guy named Randy, white guy. I've never talked to. I know who he is, but I've never, I've never personally talked to the owner. I talked to every, every one, single one of the little girls, the, the ladies in there. They know me. I know them by name. And uh, I talked to Erica, and I said, "Hey, Erica, you guys triple charged me here. You know, you charged me two hundred seventy-four dollars." And she's like, "Oh, we, we know it was you because you spend the most money here." And we went ahead and took the two credits off. And I, you know, I said, "Well, today's the fourth, and I still haven't got my credit yet." So. Uh, <laughs> So we'll see. I, usually, all those credits it takes three to five to business days, so I'm not worried about it. So, um, but you know, once you, once you go to your stores, like go to your Goodwills and just be nice to them, guys. Be nice to them. Don't be a butthole. Just be nice to the people when you're going out to Goodwills, and uh, just ask them certain things, like, hey, you know, how much are the shoes, or or if you don't know a price on something, hey, how much, you know, what do you give me for this, or you know, especially at thrift stores and estate sales. Thrift, Goodwills, they're kind of locked on their price. The, the they're kind of robots there at Goodwill. That's they know their price and the oil. Oh, well, today's purple. Pink. Everything's half off. Okay. You know, that's all I can do. Like, you go to thrift stores, you know, I see, like, a wedding dresses all the time and shoes, and I'll say, hey, how many, if I buy, like, 20 pairs of shirts, can you give me a better price? If I buy, like, 35 shirts, can you give me a better price? And, and it's either yes or no. They'll either say, uh, I, I got to stay with, a, you know, I got to stay with $3. I'll say, okay, well, how about a, how about a dollar a shirt, you know, or dollar fifty? They want money. They don't. They're not. They don't want you to walk out. If you're going to spend sixty-five dollars on shirts, they're not going to say no. And then you walk out, and you know they they want your sixty-five dollars. If they want to pay that, they'll 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 take at least forty-five or thirty. I mean, I'm assuming when these stores, you know, they don't have air conditioning, <laughs> they'll take probably every money, every bit of money they can get. So never never just uh, if you you're you're buying a lot of stuff like I do, 
try to say, hey, how much would you give me if I buy a whole bunch of crap? You know, how much? If I buy 25 shirts today, you guys cut me a deal. So they either say yes or no. I mean, you never know, guys. That's just that's just me yank, yanking a little bit. Yeah. Kiwi stock, yeah. The Kiwi stuff does good. I mean, Kiwi's the, the brand that's been around uh, since the 70s. You know, I went to the Navy in 89, and we used Kiwi there. They were on every commissary and every base I went to was Kiwi. They only had black because that's all we ever used is black. You know, we had patent leather dress shoes. Patent leather dress shoes, they just washed off of water. So, um, uh, but everything else was Kiwi. We, uh, we had a Kiwi this and a brush and a rag, and that's all we had. A lot of times we didn't have a rag. We just used a T-shirt. Uh, we used like a, we, we tear off what we had like camo shirts or like green, olive green shirts. It wore off. We would just tear it up and start using it as a, as a buffing shirt. So, but we could outbuff anybody. <laughs> but uh, especially with dress shoes, like I have this one, it's called Kiwi. And then I have another one I got off the internet. It was called Rejuvenator. R E, I think it's S U V E N A R, Rejuvenator. It does fine too. You basically you just use a scrub brush and a little bit of, little bit of solution and water, cleans it right up, and then you put it in this, uh, you put the shoes in a nylon bag, flip floor up, and then you put the shoes in a washer. And then I usually just set the shoes on the balcony and let them air dry. I don't want to tumble dry them because they just tumble all the time. I just set them on saddle and let them air dry. Uh, if I'm in a hurry, I'll, I'll take pictures of them and let them air dry. But yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't mean fine crap. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, I mean sometimes I buy a lot of just junk. I mean like uh like the thrift store a couple days ago I bought um. Xbox 360, I don't even know if it worked. It didn't have power cord or nothing, so. Uh, you know what I mean, guys. I mean, because like I said, I mean, this stuff, I mean, I know for a fact. I mean, I mean, if I didn't, I wasn't on. Let me see if I can go over here real quick. Uh, let's see. Let, let, me start, let me go to eBay. You guys can still see me, right? Let me go to eBay. I'm going to do, do an example for you real quick, okay? Let's just look under. Uh, okay, this is a. Just look, just look under Tommy shirts real quick. Tommy, pale finger. Alrighty, men's shirts. Okay, we're I'm just gonna do an example for you. Okay, what you want to do is go to men's shirts. You're gonna go to sold listings. Alrighty, you got a lot of guys pressing stuff at like seven dollars, five dollars, idiots. Okay, you're gonna do pre-owned. Okay, okay, this is just Tommy shirts. Okay, and you're gonna do U.S. only. Okay, alrighty, and I want to see what shirts have sold. So what I do is I do the price from 20 to 200. Okay, these are the Tommy shirts. Okay, see right here, uh, vintage Tommy Polo, 39.99 sold today. Another Polo sold for 24.95. A solid green Tommy shirt, 21 dollars. A vintage Stars and Stripes, 28. The rugby shirt I showed you. 25, it had nine bids. Oh, I forgot, I don't, I always do buy it now. I don't do any auctions, hold on. Let me go to buy it now, okay. There we go. Uh, I don't I don't look at the sold listings for first auctions. But you can look at all the Tommies here. Another Tommy for 32, 2480, 24, 24, 2888. All the Tommies, guys, 21.99, uh, 35, 24.96. 2199, 2495, 2470. Uh, a vintage rugby shirt, long sleeve polo. I got one of these yesterday. 66. Um, let me do one more thing here, real quick. And, uh, these are just Tommies. Like I said, I don't really. 21. So basically, like I said, uh, Tommies, uh, 25 bucks usually. 21, 2199 at the lowest. Uh, I don't. I don't really consider Tommies my home run hitters. Um, honestly. I don't consider them in the. I don't consider them like the money makers, Tommies. Um, but but like I said, you, you switch to the other shirts like that, and you'll get more money. So, uh, Mister Shoe Odor for Breeze, <laughs> for Breeze actually, yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't I don't get a lot of shoes that have shoe odor. Honestly, uh, what I do is I honestly I take the inserts out usually, like the leather shoes. I'll use for breeze or some kind of a. I'll actually wipe it off with inside with water, um, like Dawn and and a scrub like a brush, like a rag, a, a sponge. Inside, I'll use uh, just a Dawn and water. Uh, but like tennis shoes, I'll take the actual insert out. I'll scrub it with a scrubber to get all the foot stains off of them, and then I'll actually throw it in the washing machine. Yeah, I'll wash the soles inside with the washing machine. Yeah. Uh, 
I was going to tell you guys about the uh, about the story. Okay, that's a big thing I want to talk about. Uh, I see a lot of guys on YouTube that have like closets and closets of stuff. Okay, and uh, the way you want to do it, it's going to save you so much time. I haven't done it yet because my mannequin's not here yet. Uh, but what you want to do is after you take your pictures, box all your stuff up. Okay. I don't want to, you know, I see guys that have hangers and they put little scotch tape and it says, uh, you know, see, coat 491 or coat 262 or something like that. What you want to do is USPS gives you free boxes. Okay. I recommend you just ship out of their boxes if you want to, or if you're too cheap, order a bunch of boxes off of Uline or go to Walmart and buy you a bunch of basic boxes that'll hold what you're going to ship like these here these shirts personally i would not cry. i've seen guys grab these shirts like this i've even ordered them like this and they grab them and just grab them in like this they shove it in a, a bubble wrap envelope just like this okay and you get the shirt and it looks just like this okay totally i would be totally pissed off if i got one like that okay what i do is i have a seal machine and i actually i was i will poly bag it it's not a poly bag but it's actually i can put the machine it's a a bar sealer, and I put the sh I fold the shirt real nice, and I'll actually seal the shirt, and then I'll put the steal the shirt, and I'll put it either in a, in a USPS box, and I put a sticker on there that says leave leave five percent feedback or whatever, you know, five star, and I'll put my my company logo. I have a logo sticker, and I stick that on the on the on the on the poly bag, and the uh, I'll, pu I'll put the five star feedback sticker on, okay, and then I put them in whatever USPS box is needed. Uh, like I said, most of these you can put in a bu you can put them in a bubble mailer. Uh, I personally don't. I just don't put them in a bubble wrapper. I mean, uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure when you're doing your stuff, put it in a box or a bubble mailer if you choose, and write or write on the thing with a sharpie or a, a, a self sticky note. Um, and when you have your Excel spreadsheet, you're gonna you're gonna number your items, okay? So say you you say you have this, um, okay? Say you have this Tommy Hilfiger blue square checkered shirt, okay? You'll have it on your Excel. This is item number twenty two, okay? And on the box, you have it all boxed up, taped, packaged, ready to go. And on the top, on the box, it'll say 22. Next box, say 23, 24. When you get an order, you go to your order thing, print your sticker, stick it on there. It's out the door in an hour. Um, you do not want to sit there and have all your crap hanging on hangers. Then you got to sort through it. Then you got to worry about hair, moss, dirt. <coughs> dander, smoke, I don't smoke, but I mean, all that, you don't have to worry about any of that crap. When you get your stuff done, take your pictures, put it in a box, wrap it up, tape it up, put it on a shelf. I'd rather have a shelf that has 50 boxes or 100 boxes than have 100 items just hanging everywhere. You know, here, here, hanging all over the place. Yeah, you can, you can store these 50, you can put 100 of these in, in a, in a, on a shelf 8 by 10, you know, you can put 150 boxes like this, all all labeled and say, okay, Excel spreadsheet, okay, I went in there, okay, I sold that shirt, that's going to be, and you can put that in your listing ID or however you do it, uh, you know, I sold this one today, so you go to your, so you can basically say, okay, go to eBay, I sold a green green polo shirt today, okay, you go to your Excel green polo shirt, okay, we need to pull box 44, you print the label, box 44, out the door, okay, um, so, yeah, it's simple, guys. I mean, don't overwork it. That's the worst thing you want to do is, you know, I saw I, I, Steve Rankin. I, I watch all his videos, Rankin Profits. He had a video where he has a garage, and he has all these sports coats. And I, I, I like the guy. I, I have nothing. Uh, he's a, I like the guy. I watch all his videos. It's just with his system, he has a garage, and he has all these things on garage hangers, just hanging everywhere. You know, and um, to me, I would rather have shelving up. I have shelving in my garage. I have two garages here in my apartment. Uh, shelving where all the boxes, everything is in a box. And you, like I said, you can either either print a stealth sticky on there, uh, sticky note with the number 22, 23, 24, 25. You can even put on there 24 green polo on the front of it, okay? And like I said, when you get your orders, done, gone. You don't have to sit there and say, okay, we've got to pull this out today. we got to ship 17 shirts today, so let's go ahead and grab the 17 shirts. We gotta fold them up. We gotta put them in the box. We gotta tape up every single one. It's a little bit of work in the beginning, but yet you'll know that when you sell five or ten shirts a day, it's gonna take you probably less than fifteen minutes to ship every one of them. So, um, you know, that's real simple, guys. Real simple. I don't want to keep this, guys. It's been two hours. So, uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. This is the first time I've ever done one of these. So, uh, uh, 
I appreciate all the comments and everything. Uh, yeah, sh I used to use, like I said, on the on Messenger's business, I just use uh, Dawn inside, uh, especially with uh, like leather stuff. Usually the leather ones don't stink. Uh, there have some shoe sprays you can buy. Uh, I don't go that far out. I'll, I'll just squirt for breeze in there, but I don't want to do too much. You know, you don't want it to be like all, you know, you, you know, guy paying one hundred and fifty dollars for Allen and Edmonds, you know, dress shoes, and it smells like a flower when he gets it. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to do that, you know, at all. So, yeah, like I said, you can do the, you can hire people to do the same thing too. Yeah, that, yeah, using them, for, yeah, because um, like on the shoes, I ordered uh, seventy five of the uh, USPS shoe boxes. If you go to their website. USPS.com and they have a shoe box and they come in box, lots of 25. I ordered three lots of them. So basically a pair of shoes will fit perfectly in there. I wrap them in vanilla paper, um, you know, and uh, ship them in box like that. Uh, you don't need to bubble wrap them. I, I know some people that bubble mail them and all that. You know, I mean, bubble wrap them. I see, I know people that sell the shoes and just put them in like a, uh, one of those little mailers, you know, you stuff like an envelope in and they shove it in one of those mailers and you know how bad those things are going to get dinged up in the mail. I've seen people on YouTube. It's like a it's like a mailer, you know. It's like a USPS flat mailer. You open it up and you stick the crap in there and you gum the thing and stick it on and they. they get... You know how bad those shoes are going to get dinged on the way from from Billy Bob's house to Mary Jo's house. Uh, Lysol. Yeah, I may use Lysol. I, 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 you know, I haven't really done a lot of the shoes yet. So, like I said, I've got about 70 pair of them. So, I'll do a video where I'll line up all my all my shoes, and you'll be like, "Holy crap, the dude's got some shoes." The shirts, uh, shirts. Also, I've never had any problem with shirts. None of these really smell. Uh, like I said, I'll you know once before I take them to the dry cleaners this week, I'll probably just uh, go ahead and wash them. And like I said, I just use regular washing detergent, and I'll use those. Uh, it's a jug of those ball things you know it's like a it's not for breeze but it's one of those ones where it has like four different one's purple one's pink and you pour the beads in a little cup and you pour the cup in the thing they're like little bitty micro beads okay makes the stuff smell great i mean it makes it smell really good so uh but a lot of times you know I, a lot of i haven't i've never bought any of these yet that, that i mean they and this one smells like cologne i mean but it's not bad i mean but most of these that they don't they don't stink like you know dirt or dog or cat urine or anything like that they don't really smell at all so i think they they do a pretty good day at the thrift stores they they kind of weed out all that you know cat urine stuff and all that so um yeah those mailers it's like a little little flimsy uh i'm trying to here let me show you something real quick here i'm talking about these kind of mailers guys you know like this is i have stickers shipped in these but these mailers you know they come in usps mailers and they're like really papery not like cardboard and these guys are just cram the shoes in there like this and then pull the thing over and you get a pair of shoes and a, and a little usps priority mailer thing like this you know how people are gonna be slinging that crap at the warehouse Ooh, there goes some shoes there you want some shoes. get this crap out of here you know if they're leather especially they're gonna get scuffs all over them dude so you get the usps shoe boxes and they're free i mean i mean can't they're free i mean <laughs> You're gonna pay, you know. You may save a dollar or two on if you do brown box your own ones, but not not much. I mean, they're gonna go by weight only, so most of the shoes are all gonna be over a pound anyway. So you have to go, yeah. You, know, you have to go priority, not first class. Uh, you know, you have to go priority anyway. So you might as well just pay priority for the for the small box, the shoe box. So <clears throat> yeah. No, sorry, using priority boxes for yeah. That's what I would do. Priority boxes for shirts, yeah. Makes it real simple. Never. It's more professional. I sold a shirt last week. It was an Oklahoma Sooners Thomas Dean button down shirt. Real nice button down shirt. Uh, I had it for eighty nine, and the guy bought it for I think we no I had it for sixty sixty nine ninety five. The guy came back at forty, and I got him. He finally bought it for fifty five, and I paid three dollars for it. And I put it in a real nice. I had no boxes that would fit, so I went to Walmart and I bought one of those little, uh, it's called Duck, D-U-C-K boxes. It was like a dollar. The bu If you would have bought a bubble mailer, it was a dollar sixty. This real nice white hard box was a dollar seventy two. So I basically wrapped it up real nice in the paper, like the, the duck paper, and uh, put it in the box. And I'm sure he thought it was pretty professional than getting it crammed into a bubble mailer, you know. I say I get those all the time, too. I mean, when I order shirts, like sometimes on eBay, <laughs> they'll just... I'll just cram that thing in a mailer and you get it and it's like, 
You pull it out of there like, what the hell? <laughs> I paid sixty dollars for their shirt and it comes like in a comes in like you know. Oh come on, dude, you can't put it in a box, you know. You know, the same thing when I order CDs or video games, sometimes they'll all come in, they'll all be all destroyed, you know, and stuff. So um Let's see, set a schedule for these live chats. Get me in. Yeah, I'll do them. I, uh, they're going to be on my page. Are you on Messenger's Business? Are you on my page, my Facebook page? Uh, I guess that's how you found it, because maybe not. I, I don't know. I had this paste, I had this posted on my page. So, uh, Dunny, Unstoppable, In Wash, Scent Booster. That's what they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they are. The Center Booster beads. They're little beads, and you pour a little cup in there. And, man, I've noticed a difference. If I don't use those in my, like, my, my sheets, and I wash my sheets every two days on my bed. Because my dogs, you know, they sleep in the bed half the time with me, and they'll they get dog hair and all that crap all over them. So I wash them every two days. And if I don't use those, man, they, they smell good when I get done with them. So yeah, uh, pack shirts and boxes and seal boxes. If same person orders two or three of your shirts. Do you unbox them? Uh, no, I won't unbox them. What I'll do is I'll put all three boxes in another box. Honestly, being from you know, I don't want to be known as a, a a cheap cheap reseller, you know, a cheap seller on eBay. Uh, I had a name store, but I think I'm going to change it to either the gentleman's the gentleman's closet or the alpha male store or something, something professional. Uh, cause I, what I'm going to be basically selling is, is high end clothing and electronics. So I'll have a subsection for electronics. I won't sell any media, but it's basically going to be high end clothing and it's going to be called like either, like I said, either the gentleman's closet or, uh, the alpha males closet or something, something kind of uppity, you know, like that. So, you don't know how you found, I think you found me on YouTube. You probably found me on YouTube. No, uh, let's see, hold on. You're not on my, you're not on my Facebook page? Okay, hold on, let me, so let me give you my Facebook page. Let me, uh, let me copy the link real quick, one second, okay? You guys, I got about 2,000 followers here, hold on, all right. Alrighty, let me go there. Hold on, let me go here. There. Oh, got hold on a second. Let me get back to here. I gotta figure out where I'm at. Hold on, guys. That's that. Oh, hold on a second, guys. I lost everything here. Gotta figure out where I'm at. Oh. Nope, that ain't it. That ain't it. Hold on, where'd I go? Hold on a second, guys. There's that. Okay, there's me. I'm trying to figure out. Hold on, let me find my. Uh, I'm trying to add it to my. Uh, oh, here you go. Never mind. Okay, here we go. I'm going to post the link right here. It's right here for you. Okay, guys. Uh, did it come up? I don't know why it says all that all that stuff. I copied the link right here for the Facebook page. It's on the. Uh, where you guys are commenting right now. Let me, uh, let me go back to my page here and say something real quick. Let me. Uh, Oh, here it is. So no, I gave you the wrong link. Hold on. Uh, that other one was too long. It was a permalink. My bad. Uh, hold on, guys. Let me get back over here. Here you go, guys. There you go. There's the link now. Yeah, click on that one. That's my page. Sorry about the other one. That one here. There, this one here is no good. Um, that's a permalink. Okay. Yeah, if you type in that, guys, just copy and paste that into your browser. It's going to be called Ecom Mastery. I think it's Ecom. Uh, yeah, I just changed the page name. It used to be called FBA Media Secrets. Now it's called e-commerce with eBay, Shopify, and Amazon. I've got uh, 1,859 followers so far. Uh, I've only been on it. But I've only been back on eBay or on Facebook about eight months, nine months. But it, everybody knew me from before. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, so hopefully that'll help you guys. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll do these probably... Uh, I do a video usually every day on Facebook. Um, you know, everybody likes to see what I'm doing every day. Um, you know, I'm not a guru or anything. I don't proclaim to be a guru, but I, I do very well, and I do I do, do this every single day of the week. So um, I'm not one of these guys that parties all the time and shoots a video whenever he feels like it. I'm, I shoot videos like today. I shot video uh, outsourcing today. Um, so if you guys need any videos specifically on something, let me know. I mean, I've done... Hundreds of videos on the Echo Pros and the Masters and how to do books and how to use Inventory Lab and Scan. I've done all those videos, so you can find those anywhere. But I'm mainly going to, my next six months is going to be dominating eBay and uh, 
Amazon, I just got to increase more inventory, that's all. So eBay is going to be the thing where I want to show you guys how to really dominate eBay. Pick a niche. If you're a woman and if you know women's shoes or jeans, you can dominate it at thrift stores. I see hundreds, not if not thousands of pairs of shoes every day. My one thrift store, they've got probably 10 times the women's shoes as they do the men's shoes. And if I knew women's shoes, I'd buy them. There's, they have, sometimes they have dollar days. You buy every, any shoe, any shoe in there's a dollar. Uh, but I don't know crap about women's shoes. If you guys knew about, you know, if I, if I figured out how to buy women's shoes, I'd buy women's shoes. Pair of purses. I saw like three coach purses yesterday. I didn't know if they're any real or not, but, uh, but like women's jeans, women's shoes, I could kill it. If I knew brands of women's shoes and jeans, I, I know Miss Me's and Sevens and all that, but I mean, um, I don't know anything else about that. So. I'm probably basically just going to dominate my area that I know, which is men's ties, high-end ties, um, sports coats. I don't do a lot of sh suits, sports coats, um, shirts, you know, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, guitars. I know women's shoes. <laughs> yeah, women. Uh, there's Shireen. You're under Nathan now. Hey, yeah, yeah I'll do the shoes. Yeah, I'll do shoes to probably tomorrow. I'll use my, my camera, my 4K camera, and shoot shoes. Uh, guitars, I want to find the perfect box. I'm going to I'm gonna do all the Wii guitars first. There's probably, I got like 22 Wii guitars, and they break apart. You basically hit the button, and they break apart, and you can fold them in. I want to either buy the perfect box on Uline or find the perfect USPS box. I can't, you can't ship Amazon Prime USPS boxes, so you have to find a white box. I want to find one that's perfect, and I'll give you guys a link to Uline or somewhere that you can buy those boxes and it will fit perfectly Wii guitars in there. So, um, the Wii guitars and the shoes are simple. Like I said, with dress shoes, guys, if, like I said, if you don't want to really mess with them, just send them to a shoe cleaner guy. Um, tennis shoes, you, you're going to spend less than, honestly, guys, less than five minutes doing a dress, a, clean, a tennis shoe. The machine's going to do it all. You basically use your brushes, your white stuff here. Use your Dawn, at, Dawn and a brush first to get all the dirt and crap off. Make sure you can get the seals off. You can sometimes use a toothbrush and a little bit of bleach and water to get the bottoms done if they're white. Um, then I use that stuff called Rejuvenator. And then uh, basically after I do all that, it takes about a minute and a half. Because most of the shoes I buy are not bad. And once I do the shoe and a half, and then I put it in the wash. It comes out of the wash. You take the shoe strings out, you take the insoles out and clean the insoles. Then you put the insoles, the shoe strings, and the shoes in a nylon open bag. Put them in the washer and wash them. And then basically after that, you take them out. I set them in the air, let them air dry. You can tumble dry them if you want to. I, I, really, I usually don't, though. Um, oh, the, the, the Facebook link? Okay, hold on a second. Let me just get you the name then, okay? Um, I'll just get you the name of this. Name of this. I'm surprised the link wouldn't work. Uh, all right, let me get you. I'm just going to get you the... Uh, here, I'll just get you the name of the name of the group. I'm trying to get back over to where I was at now. There we go. Okay, that's the name of the group. <clears throat> You'll see it. It's got like 15, 1,800 people. 1,900 people there. Um, but yeah, guys, you guys, anything, I appreciate it. I mean, I can stay on if you guys need to talk about anything. There's 12 of you guys watching, so it's only uh, 948 here. I feel pretty good. I'm on my midaphanil, so I'm pretty good. Uh, but yeah, usually, like I said, with clothes, I mean, it's, once I do the Excel spreadsheet and, uh, you know, once I, once I knock down with it, there's really on dress shirts, there's only about 20, maybe 20, not even 25, probably 20 brands that you need to look for that are, that are money makers. They're going to make you 24 to, to 60. Like I said, you, you find a, a Stefano Ricci, 100 to 500, uh, 100 to 400, 300. Depends on the Stefano Ricci shirt though. Uh, sports coats. All over the place. Um, most sports coats, you know, sometimes 20, all the way up to, you know, I've seen them up to a thousand uh, for a sports coat. So, I mean, it's just a. Uh, commerce. You put in description instead of chat. Oh, what did I do? I'm sorry. Where's that? I don't see where I put description at, though. All I can do is comment here. Uh, sorry, hold on a second. Uh, yeah, the only, only place on this on this Google thing is to, for me to put it in, in the chat part. I can't put it anywhere else. Uh, oh, the description. I, I know what you're talking about. 
when I'm done, yeah, I'll put it in, you know, when I'm done with the video, as, it takes like a, like eight or six or eight hours for this thing to upload to YouTube or something, so, it's not available to watch, I'll put it in the description, yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about, underneath, I'll put it in there, yeah, and, uh, I know, I know what you're talking about now, yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, it says, you know, like I said, you guys, it, this business is not hard, if you, if you make it hard, it's hard, but I mean, I just got into clothing because, uh, I just, I'm kind of burned out on CDs, I mean, even though I still do them every single day, um, I still, I mean, I still get tired of doing them, I mean, uh, even though I know I'm making good money with them, you know, video games and stuff like that, because I still, I still do 200 a day, uh, I buy my CD cases, 200 in a case, I usually buy a thousand, a thousand for every week, sometimes I don't do all thousand, because I just get other crap going on, and, uh, sometimes I just take a day off, and I just do nothing, I just kind of chill, I would, I go to the gym every morning. I, I, I've never missed my gym. Never missed my cardio. I do an hour and a half of cardio in the morning, and then I work out in the morning. So, and I eat about um, eat about eight times a day. So uh, I never miss any of that. But other times I'll just get kind of where I'm doing CDs. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done for today. I'm not doing anymore. You know, and um, I'll be like, ah, I'm done. You know, I don't want to do more. But uh, but I think you'll, yeah, next coming month you're gonna see me really dominate eBay. Um, you know, I'll go from, like I said, I've got like five listings now, and they're all clothing. I'll go from five to like, you see me at the end of the week. This week, I'll have over 100 on there. Watch, you'll see. And uh, most of them will be the shoes. And then, uh, like I said, my mannequin, let me see. Here, I can upload my tracking real quick. It said my mannequin is, uh, it should be here to like tomorrow or Tuesday, because it's in Hutchins, which is like an hour away. So it should be to meet him out tomorrow. And I'll, I'll show you unboxing it, and I'll show you how to how to put a shirt on there. And I'll do a, a, an in-depth video on uh I'll, I'll take shirt i'll take like 10 shirts to the dry cleaners tomorrow and i'll show you i'll press a couple on a video i'll show you guys how to iron on a video if you guys don't know how to iron i'm sure you do but i'll show you either way and i'll show you how to put the shirt on the, on a mannequin how to take the how to you know, certain pictures you want to take certain measurements you want to take even on a shirt you want to do pit to pit you want to do it you know collar to collar to the bottom um, you want to do sleeve length, um, and, and what you'll need to do is you need to go to Walmart and get you a, a paper tape measure, which is in the uh, clothing department. Get the longest one they have. Don't get you don't get the little 36 inch one, okay? That's not going to do crap for you. You're gonna you have to get the, like a five footer one. It's like a cloth tape measure. It comes out. You know you have to fold it back up and rubber band it. But um, you'll need those if you want to sell. Um, even if you want to measure shoes too. Shoes you're going to want to measure tip to tip, and you want to measure the heel height. A lot of people want to know the heel height. Uh, most of the time you get your information off the shoe, so, um, yeah, definitely, yeah, I know, I usually, uh, a couple of my videos on YouTube about a couple thousand views, uh, uh, especially with video, uh, when I'm, uh, you're talking about after I, do I, do I do all the CDs automatically or just, uh, usually I look at them, like say, um, okay, like say like this, uh, video game, I haven't even looked at it yet, it's called Dragon's Looks like a pretty high dollar game. You guys can this one will go good. It looks like Dragon's Quest 8 PS2, some kind of one of those anime anime games. What I do is basically just put my glasses on. I this just it helps me just look at double. If I can see anything with the glasses, I know the customers can see something. So all I do is I basically look it up. Okay, this one has a bunch of little scratches right here. You guys can't see it probably, but it's got a bunch of little scratches here. Uh, I can kind of have done so many thousands of them. I can probably say this one, the Echo Pros will get this one out. And then basically, this one is immaculate. Nothing on this one. I don't have to touch this one. I'll, um, I'll wipe it off with the terry cloth. I don't want my fingerprints on there. Usually when I wear a pair of media, I wear a latex gloves. So, uh, but the case, this case looks brand new. So nothing to do really. I wouldn't even change the case out. I would just basically fix the one CD and then, uh, Usually, I, everything I ship on Amazon, I overwrap just for safety reasons. Uh, thing, the worst thing you want to do is, that by the time you ship this into Amazon and it gets to the customer, it's going to go between probably four and eight people before it gets to your customer. Uh, usually, because what you do is you're going to ship it in. It's in a box. person's going to get it. They're going to take it out. Okay? They're going to scan it. And then they're going to put it in a, bu a buggy thing, and that person's going to take it. The buggy's going to take it. Somebody else is going to take it out and scan it, pick, put, it in, put it on the shelf. Person's going to take it off the shelf when you sell it. That's another person. They're going to take it and put it on a conveyor belt. It's going to go to somebody else. They're going to pick, you know, it's going to go to five or six people. And if you don't have it just like this, like raw, no covering, anything, if somebody, somebody drops it, 
CD pops out, you know, she gets a scratch on the CD, and they just put it back in there real quick and then ship it off. They get, they get in, it's like, there's a big, there's a big ass scratch on the CD. How's it, how can it be like new? And they're like, you know, like, well, it was like new when I sent it in. So, you know, that's why I pretty much, uh, I have a shrink tunnel down here. If everybody guys have seen my video, I've got a thousand dollar shrink tunnel down here, and I've got a, uh, a DVD over wrapper over here. I've got a CD over wrapper over here. So I've got pretty much uh, all of them. So um, uh, besides clothing, shoes, and eBay, would you do kitchen items or other type items? Uh, thrift stores. Um, I do look at kitchen items. I bought a dehydrator for myself. Uh, it's a Cabela dehydrator. Got it for five bucks. But I'm, I'm going to make dog beef jerky in it tomorrow. I bought a thing for beef jerky on Amazon. We're going to make dog beef jerky tomorrow. So, uh, but yeah, I buy, um, I buy a lot of Keurigs, Keurig coffee makers. I'll buy blenders. I bought a new bullet, one of those magic bullet blender things. Had all the attachments and everything. Had like six different, ten or eight, ten or, all in a bag. A big bag, a big bag of stuff. I got the magic bullet thing for $4. Okay, and it works. And uh, I looked on eBay and they're going god awful amount of money okay thing you don't want to ship in is like bread makers they're going to be i mean you can buy them uh there's a couple bread makers that are going to make you some money and a lot of them will just just junk um but a lot of times you want to stick with the high-end stuff you know the quasin arts i mean like the uh the big high dollar blenders you know the mixers and stuff like that you know it's going to be expensive to ship I just, there's a couple things in my garage i bought in estate sales i mean at uh online auctions one's a big giant projector um one's a huge big commercial coffee maker i paid three dollars for it that thing's going for four hundred something dollars on ebay i have to find a box big enough to put it in i paid three dollars for it and brand new three dollars restaurant opened and then like a month later restaurant went out of business and they had an auction and i bought this cur this coffee mag it's a it's a it's a creamer nestle creamer commercial creamer thing I paid three bucks for it so um uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, uh, Shireen, yeah, I'll basically, I'll buy anything that I can make money on. Um, like I buy power tool chargers. I'll, I'm going to start doing a lot of pawn shop videos too. I'm going to, uh, buddy, I went to a pawn shop today and they had a day, they had a, they had a DJI Phantom. I'm going to buy the new Phantom Pro, which is like 14, about 1500 bucks. But they had a, they had a used DJI Phantom they wanted 500 for, but one of the rotors was messed up. I was going to buy that and flip that on eBay. But he said one of the rotors was uh, mal malfunctioning or something. But like a lot of pawn shops I go to, my biggest one I go to is called American Pawn. I know a buddy there named Jason. He's been there. He's been my buddy for like nine years, a little Mexican kid. And uh, if I go in there and look at anything, he'll give me almost half off usually. But like the, they have like PS4s. They have like 50 of them, but the lowest they go on PS4s is like 180. Um, and uh, but they have like a lot of iPads. Last last month they had four Google Glasses and the glasses you could have got those for like a hundred bucks. Uh, Google Glasses, you know, and stuff like that. So you you can, you have to scan while you're there, or look it up while you're there, and say you know, say you got an iPad and it's got the thirty two meg, you know, thirty two gig iPad, and you can get it for eighty five dollars. And you look on eBay and they're going for one fifty to one eighty. You know, you know what you could do honestly is you could kind of. I'm, I, this is a secret I'm going to tell you at my pawn shop, okay? You can put it on layaway. So say you uh, say you, you get the iPad and you take a bunch of pictures rather with your phone. You guys, this is a good secret. Listen to this, okay? My, 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 my all, all pawn shops have usually have a layaway, okay? Take a bunch of pictures of an item, uh, like an iPad. Take the back, the front, power it on. Take a bunch of pictures of it. Say it's eighty-five dollars, and you know it's going to go for one sixty, one seventy. You have to put twenty percent down on a pawn shop. So take go in there and put twenty dollars down on a, on an iPad, and you're only in there for twenty dollars. And say it sells in a week, you take that person's money from PayPal and you go buy it and keep the profit. There you go. That's a good secret, guys. Pawn shop, con, James's pawn shop secrets one hundred and one. Most pawn shops will let you do a layaway. It's only usually a 90-day layaway. You got to make a payment every 30 days, uh, but you can really kill it if you know what you're doing. I mean, a lot of times they'll let you look at it, and and they'll walk away for a little bit. If, say if you look at a camera or like a lens. Yesterday they had a real nice. I went there yesterday. They had a real nice 70 to 300 millimeter lens, 
that wanted 90, 90 bucks for it. I could have got it for $65. So say I take that lens real quick and I take one of the little jewelry things that sits on, you know, like how the women show you jewelry in a pawn shop. Take one of those little things and set it on a counter. You know, take your four or five pictures and say, yeah, hey, Jason, I'm going to put that on layaway, buddy. You need 65 for that? Yeah, I'll throw it on layaway. He'll say, okay, uh, $18 down, buddy. And then you put take all those pictures. You can even do it in your damn car. I'm sorry. You can even do it in your car. Take the pictures. And put the listing on eBay in your car, and you're into that you're into that that camera camera thing for 16 bucks, and you say you list it and sell it for, you know, you offer it for 180 or 150, our best offer, and you get an offer of 90. You're only into it for like 13 dollars. James's Pawn Shop Secrets 101 right here. I need to start a new a TV channel. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know commercial commercial stuff. I get I get these auctions I go to all the time, guys. It's not that I have, I don't run out of stuff to buy. I just run out of labor. Um, yeah, I get a lot of Kurgs. I got about five different Kurgs, six different Kurg machines. I need to test them. I have my own personal Kurg. I need to test them, put a, put a pod in there, make sure it pours out right and everything, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. I'm sorry. The Echo Pros? Uh, best place you need to tell is my buddy Keith at Elm USA. Um... Yeah, the, the cloth is in the... Let me go back, guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, I think the cloth tape measure... Yeah, it's in the fabric department, yeah. I had to talk to some little girl and say, Hey, where's a little... I need a cloth tape measure. She asked if I was gay. <laughs> she goes, You making your own clothing? I was like, No. <laughs> it's rebay. <laughs> She's like, Oh, I thought you were gay. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, you call uh, Elm USA. They have a bunch of different options at Elm USA. Uh, for the Echo Pros, uh, Messenger's Business. I think it's who you're asking, right, about the CD machines? Yeah, Echo Pros. Yeah, Keith at OMUSA. USA. Uh, they're a thousand cash out the door. I bought all mine. They do have a payment plan. If you can't pay it all, they make it. They break it out into 12 monthly payments, zero interest. Um, Echo Master is going to run you 18,000 though. Um, the Keurig from Goodwill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good pawn shop, Ted. <laughs> uh, dude, if you can buy the skis, if they're a name brand, I would find a box. I would call Uline. Uline has every box made today. They have a box for skis, I'm, I guarantee you. It may cost you $6 for a box. You know, a box is... Th oh, sorry, I can't see what I'm saying now. Sorry, on them. You know, you may have a box that's this, you know, this long, you know, eight, six feet long, and, uh, you know... That 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 and you should both. They make a box for it. I guarantee you. If you can, you can make good profit profit off of a good skis. I bought ski boots last week. These are high dollar ski boots. All the claps are like metals, and I mean, I, I'm I'm amazed. I'm gonna see how much I can get for these ski boots. I mean, these I paid five bucks, five bucks for these ski boots. You guys, you guys, if you're ever in my town in Dallas, come with me for one day. You'll be amazed what we can find in like two hours. You'd be like, holy crap! And we we would only go to like three thrift stores. And there's like, and near me, there's uh, 18 Goodwills and like 44 thrift stores in like an hour radius from me. And I've ever, I've ever only been to like six thrift stores. So, uh, is there interesting? Uh, layway, no. Nope, nothing on the layway. Not, not at mine. I mean, like I said, this is American Pawn. If you Google it, uh, they're in Dallas here. Uh, it's a 90 day interest free layway. And now, if you miss a payment, you lose the product. So, uh, you don't want to miss a payment. So, just make sure. Uh, you, like I said, say, say it's $100, okay? And you, you make your first payment of uh, $20, $20 or whatever, okay? You got three, 90 days to pick it up. Say the next month you're short. You can only pay $5. So as long as you pay a dollar on your next payment, it won't get put back in inventory. If you miss that payment by one day, it goes right back out on the shelf. So uh, I learned that the hard way about eight years ago. <laughs> I had something, I don't know what, Xbox 360 or something, and I missed my payment. I came in two days later and like, oh, we already put it back on our shelf. Some dude already bought it. I'm like, ah, oh, man. Yeah, so, no, there's no, you know, I don't know if all pawn shops do that. Most most pawn shops do a layway. Pawn, pawn, uh, pawn Express, Pawn USA. Uh, most pawn shops will do a layway. Um, you know. What's wrong with the layway plan? <laughs> that layway, layway plan will work. What's wrong with that? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with layway. Hey, man, it's just... What, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Messenger's business. <laughs> You're so naughty on that low plan. plan. It, it works, man. What's wrong with that? Say, say you go like, uh, like they had a, uh, 
<coughs> they had a uh, they had like five Beats headphones yesterday. Cordless, real nice, blue, pink, red, black. Uh, but they were not cheap. They're like a ninety nine bucks a piece or something like that. Uh, they had one was real nice turquoise one. I have a corded one. I like my corded one better. Uh, never had luck. Some I lose a lot of range area, so I lose my Bluetooth a lot. And uh, so I have a corded one. But say you say you you know they have a special on Beats you know one day or power tools. God Almighty, they have power tools out the wazoo. Drills, socket. I mean every kind of drill you can think of. I mean. You know, a lot of those kits, you know, they but they'll they'll put the Ryobi, you know, the the titanium, they'll put the green one together, and they'll put the, the drill, the saw, the flashlight, the battery, two charges and all that. You get all that crap for like sixty bucks. You tell me you can't make sixty bucks you know, you can't sell that thing for two hundred dollars on eBay. You know? You can get that all day long, guys. If you know how if you you have to if you know what the price of the stuff is, you can kill it at pawn shops. I bought a TV for my for my, my setup I'm putting in here tomorrow. It's a file cabinet, but I have, I'm going to have all my video game systems on there. So when I repair a game that's like hammered, I got like 200 games that are hammered. I got to run through the master. I'll pop it into the PS2, and it's I bought a monitor. It's a TV screen. So I was having a hard time hooking up a lot of these because uh, a lot of these the AV cables don't hook up to a, a regular monitor on the computer. So I bought a TV yesterday. It was a it's a brand new Samsung 20 inch. The only thing is it didn't have a stand. I'm going to mount it. I'm going to mount it on Velcro to the back of the file cabinet. I'm going to put two giant Velcro strips. I'm going to mount it to the file cabinet on the wall. Then I'm going to drill a hole in the shelf, and I'm going to have all the cables come. You know, it's going to have one component cable and an HDMI cable. And then I have what they call an AV splitter that hooks up six different AV systems at a time. So I'm going to have the Xbox hooked up, Xbox 360, um, Xbox One's in my bedroom. I'm going to have the GameCube, Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64 all hooked up. So when I buy those games, and I need to test them before I ship them to Amazon for FBA, I'll pop them in that thing and the monitor will be on and it'll say, okay, it loads up fine, good to go. Uh, but yeah, I bought that monitor yesterday, that TV, and uh, they had it for, he had it for $89.95 and he gave me, he said, how about 50 bucks out the door? I said, I'll take $50. How about $50, no tax? I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> he goes, you spend enough money with me all the time. 50 bucks, no tax. So yeah, I got it for 50 bucks. So it's all about rapport, guys. And you repeat business, you know, that's all it is, guys, yeah. Yeah, that pawn shop tip works, man. I'm telling you. I'm, you guys, listen to me. I do this every day. I'm not one of these gurus that does it once a year. I'm out every day. I'll show you videos. I'm out every day doing this stuff, guys. So you go to a pawn shop. You guys, try it out. Go to a pawn shop tomorrow. Um, women, if you're afraid, you can take your husband with you. Go to a pawn shop tomorrow and find something and say, hey, uh, don't don't offer the price. So say, say, you know, I always say, hey, Jason, what can you do for me, man? Well, hook me up. What can you do for me? Uh, if you're new and you've never been in one of these pawn shops, uh, some of these are kind of rough, you know, rough kind of, some of them are in ethnic towns, you know, and, um, when you go in there and just say, Hey, what's the best you can do on that? You know, if I, if I, I need to put it on layaway, I'm just kind of fib and say, Hey, I'm tight on money. What's the best you can do on layaway if I put that on layaway today? Or what's the best cash out the door you can do for me today? Say, I've only got so much money. Can you, you know, you guys are, you know, you, you guys have that Xbox for 60 bucks. Will you take, we take 40. You know, and they'll probably say no. They'll probably say not 45 or 50. And I was like, well, can I go ahead and put it on layaway? And they'll say like, yeah, sure. It's going to be uh, $15 down. Every pawn, every pawn shop I've ever been to in Texas, they have a layaway. Every one of them. I can put four wheelers on layaway. Um, they have they have $2,000 camo four wheelers up there yesterday. Uh, it was like $2,995 or something like that. And I got Jason down to 25. And he's like, well, you're going to need to put down like 600 bucks and then pay the rest in 90 days. You can put, you know, you can put four wheelers on layaway. So I'm assuming, you know, guns especially too. You can put guns on layaway, uh, fishing, fishing reels, rods. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, you got to, it's amazing what people sh dump at pawn shops. I, I go catfishing a lot and, and a buddy of mine, Chad Ferguson, he's on YouTube. If you ever go to YouTube and you like fishing, cat, this is called the Catfish Edge. Chad Ferguson, he's a buddy, he lives in a little way from me. He's a big YouTube guy on catfish. He dominates Texas for catfish. He he shows you the rig he has. Like his reel is almost two hundred bucks. His rod's another fifty or eighty for a rod. You go to the pawn shops and you know what you're looking for in rods and reels. Uh, you get those things for ten bucks, fifteen bucks. Even even you know, even if the rod is crap, buy the rod and reel combo, throw the rod away, and sell the reel. Yep. They had a Cannondale bike there yesterday. Cannondale, which is a real nice hot auto bike. 
but the the, the real the, t the tires were FUBAR, and they wanted four hundred dollars for it. So they, they knew their price on the Cannondales. That's the one thing. Usually on on face on pawn shops, they will look up the stuff on eBay. Uh, they know the price is pretty good, so they're not going to give you nothing for like fifty percent off or eighty percent off. They'll but they'll do something with you. I mean, they'll do something with you. Like uh, normally, I see a ton of TVs there. They get rid of all their TVs. They used to have like. 50 or 60 TVs, and I guess the price on TVs have dropped. You know, everybody's going to 4K now. Like my one, in, I have a 65-inch plasma in the bedroom, and I'm probably gonna uh, put the plasma in the living room. So I, I don't ever, I'm never in the living room, and I'll probably buy a 4K UHD at Sam's. They have them really cheap at Sam. I have a Sam's membership, and nobody can beat Sam's on price usually on those 4K TVs. And I'll probably buy a 4K TV pretty soon. So, but I mean, it's just um, those pawn shops. You know, if you know what you're looking for, I don't do anything with jewelry. Uh, they get watches, man. <laughs> you know your watches. I mean, even the smart watches. They have, people pawn everything. You know, druggies or whatever. They they find stuff. They'll pawn everything. And uh, a lot of the people don't know the value. And most of the time, they'll look it up on eBay real quick. But usually, they don't. If they if it's eighty dollars, they'll 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 give it to you for fifty or sixty. Um, but like I said, like I said, I'm telling you guys, just put that puppy on layaway. Take a bunch of pictures while you're there. Who's it going to know? I mean, you can always, if you take pictures, you can always take it home and Photoshop it or put it on PicMonkey and PicMonkey and fix the picture, the outlet on the pictures. Uh, put it on Photoshop and take out, white out everything except for the picture on the white app. You can white out it on Photoshop. I think it's layer and then something on the Photoshop. Uh, but yeah, so say you put a, say you want to buy, you know, you, they got a, a heck of a deal on iPods and iPads. Say, hey, Jason, I'll take all five of those iPads. I'll put them all on my way. You get a 32, a 64 gig, a 128 gig. You get a, a fourth gen iPod, and you're putting 500 and something dollars of crap on layaway or something like that. And you put down, you know, 75 dollars, and then you go list all five of those on eBay the same night. And you sell one or two in a week. Pays for the rest of the other three are free, basically. Yeah, that's a tip. I should I should have sold that tip. <laughs> I should have sold that tip to everybody. <laughs> Uh, all right, you guys be good. That's two. Oh man, two hours and thirty-five minutes. I got. I got to let you guys go now. Yeah. All right, guys. Sunday night, twelve o'clock. I gotta go jump into my jacuzzi. I do a, a ritual where I jump in my jacuzzi at night and put a uh, sea salt in there, soak for like thirty minutes, and then because <clears throat> I get up at like four thirty, so I gotta get up in like six hours. But uh, hope this helps you guys. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. I don't know how long it takes for it to loop onto uh, YouTube. But it should be on there pretty soon, guys. Uh, it's a long video. I don't think anybody's gonna. I don't think anybody's gonna sit through and watch this thing for two hours and twenty-seven minutes. But you know, it is good. It's a good video. I like talking. I don't mind talking to you guys. Uh, I'm gonna stop this now, guys. You guys have a great night and uh, and just join my page. And I'll um, I'll put the description on my page on here for you to join my page. And uh, I post on my page every day. I don't do YouTube every day, but I I do post on my page every day, videos and posts. So. Uh, Thanks again, guys. Everybody, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I'm just trying to be helpful for everybody, okay?